Sir, very good morning. Dr. Paul. Yeah, honorable, honorable vices. Back to sir, let's join. Uh, okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for joining. And uh, Dr. Paul, uh, the, uh, we may start our session. And uh, yes, sir. Uh, I think we could we could start our session since all the dignitaries are present over here. So we could start. Uh, so as per the schedule only. Shall I? Shall I? Yes. Yes. Good morning to all of you. A warm and hearty welcome to all of you present here. for the inaugural ceremony of the International Conference on Informatics, Artificial Intelligence and Intelligence System organized by ADU NGI Innovative Intelligence Singapore and India in association with St. Mary's Technical uh, Campus, uh, West Bengal, India. The thought process of a young British parliament, Alan Turing, explored the mathematical possibility of artificial intelligence in the year 1950. Using available information as well as reasons in order, machines can also solve problems and make decisions. This was the logical framework of his 1950 paper, Computing Machinery and Intelligence in which he discussed how to build intelligent machines and how to test their intelligence. So artificial intelligence is impacting the future of virtually every industry and every human being. Artificial intelligence has acted as the main driver of emerging technologies like big data, robotics, IoT, and it will continue to act as a technological innovator for the foreseeable future. Keeping in view with this intelligence, St. Mary's Technical Campus Kolkata and A2NGI Singapore jointly has organized this international conference today. Really, it is a remarkable day for all of us. Now, I would like to request to the general chair of this ICON IAISS 2021, Dr. Somo Pal, Principal St. Mary's Technical Campus, Kolkata, to introduce the theme of the international conference. Sir, please. Dr. Pitt, Honorable Vice Chancellor, Moana Amitri Salamaza, University of Technology, Professor Shoyka, Honorable Chairman, Honorable President, Timothy K. Rao, Good morning, everyone. This is Dr. Vinay Kumar from MIT. Dr. P.K. Paul, Open Chair and Executive Director of the EG Department, Raikans University. And industries. Organizing secretary and organizing committee members and my faculty. 
and our students. Uh, very good. Yeah. All of you. Yeah. It gives me immense pleasure to be here in the auspicious occasion of the inaugural session of a skill and knowledge based international conference on informatics, artificial intelligence, and intelligence system organized by EduNTI Innovative Intelligence in association with St. Mary's Technical Campus, Kolkata, with knowledge partner, New Field Department. Iconia since 2021 aims to provide a high level knowledge forum for the students, researchers, scientists, engineers, and educators who are interested in the emerging areas of artificial intelligence, informatics, robotics, data science, intelligence systems, digital society and transformation, digital education, and many more. This conference is a perfect platform, not only from the diverse field, but also others who are interested in gathering knowledge in those cutting edge technologies, like artificial intelligence, as this revolution of human intelligence processes by you and support. We are fortunate enough, our Honorable Secretary, Sri Sihar Sassan Sir, with us. Thanks, sir, for your gracious presence. We are extremely fortunate enough, we have with us Honorable Vice Chancellor, sir. Thanks, sir, for your valuable advice and gracious presence despite of your busy schedule. Thank you so much, sir, for your gracious presence. We are highly thankful to Sri Gavin Kumar, founder and president. AUTI Innovative Intelligence and Professor Vijay Kumar Varadarajan, Vice President, AUNDI Innovative Intelligence, for their constant support and advice towards successful organization of this international conference. I also take opportunity to express my gratitude. Dr. P.K. Paul, Program Chair, for his constant support and advice. Without his support, it was not possible to organize this Icon Year 2021. We are thankful to Professor Devashis De, the advisor and director of School of Computational Science, Maulan Awul Kalam Azad University of Technology, for his valuable advice time to time. innovative intelligence. We are extremely thankful to all esteemed international advisors for our international advisory body and technical program committee members for their valuable advice. Last but not the least, my sincere thanks to all the members of the organizing committee, all faculty and staff members and students of then very technical campus Kolkata family. With these few words, a warm welcome to you all in the inaugural ceremony of International Conference on Informatics, Artificial Intelligence, and Intelligences. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now I would request our program chair and chief executive officer of ICON AISS 2021, Dr. P.K. Paul, executive director, PG department, information scientist, Raiganj University, to say a few words about this occasion. Thank you, sir. Oh, very good morning to all of you. First of all, I would like to offer my gratitude all the dignitaries present over here. Respected Professor Shoykat Matro sir, respected uh, Professor Damodar sir, the Vice Chancellor of Chaitanya University, and Shoykat Matro sir, the Vice Chancellor of uh, 
Maulana Abul Kalam Azad University of Technology, all the session chairs, the general chair, and also the founder and also the key members of the St. Mary. So over to our uh, organizing secretary, madam. Thank you, everyone, once again. Thank you, sir, for your sharing your ideas over there. Now I would like to request Ms. Payal Ganguly, head of the department, basic science department, of St. Mary's Technical Campus, Kolkata, for the inaugural song. Pail, please. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, today we will start. Guru Vikramaya, Guya Prabharaya, Guru Vikuna Gurabe, Guru Daita Kalachetra, Guru Dharma Sadaradhaya. Guru Putra Paritrati, Guru Pakhande Khande Kaya. Gita Saraya, Gita Tatibhaya, Gita Gustraya, Dimagi, Gurhe Gulpaya, Ganga Madhaya, Gurjaya Pradaya, Dimagi, Gunati Taya, Gunati Taya, Gunata Vidantaya Vakritundai Gauri Tanaya Dimahi Gajishanaya Bhale Chandraya Sri Ganeshaya Dimahi Thanks all of you. Thank you, Pal Madam, for the beautiful song. Sorry for interruption. So I would like to request everyone kindly mute yourself. Kindly mute yourself, everyone. And I would like to request also Sheikh Sabirul. Kindly mute your video also. Sheikh Sabirul. Kindly Sheikh Sabirul mute. mute. Also. Video band karo. Sheikh Sabirul video band karo. Video band karo. And Sheikh Sabirul. Okay, also okay, mute okay. everyone. Everyone, please, please mute, mute yourself. Okay, madam, let's start. Okay, thank you. Okay, sir. Uh, okay. Now I would like to request the general chair, Dr. S. Pearl, to request the chief guest, uh, the vice chancellor of Macau, Professor Shripat Mitra, sir, for the for his guest speech. Sir, please. Thank you very much. Am I audible? Sir. Can you hear me properly? Yes, sir. Audible. Welcome, sir. Oh, yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. So it uh, gave me an immense pleasure uh, to uh, <coughs> remain amongst you uh, in this international conference organized by the St. Mary's uh, Group of Institute. And the subject is very important. And this is uh, basically the related to a new generation learning in engineering and technology, which is required for each and every branch of engineering. This uh, skill for partnering to uh, information science, particularly artificial intelligence, data science, and related uh, uh, subjects, related uh, skills. These are uh, going to be a part and parcels of each, each and every discipline. So uh, with that context, St. Mary's Group of Institute under the leadership of Dr. Shomopal is organizing a very, very important and experts and luminaries uh, in, their, in this particular field for sharing their knowledge, expertise for the benefits of these uh, participants, particularly I believe that uh, numbers of uh, students, research scholars and faculty members, they, are, uh, they have assembled over here and it will be of immense help to them. Yeah. Artificial intelligence, it is uh, not only going to impact the industries, but it, uh, it is going to transform uh, other practices as well, be it agriculture, be it healthcare, be it service sector, be it our social uh, uh, form, all these things are going to be impacted. Already we have observing this sort of uh, this transformation, uh, particularly in this decade, there has been a phenomenal growth uh, in this uh, uh, in this particular area, artificial intelligence and related subject, subjects, uh, robotics uh, and um, uh, in manufacturing sector, additive, emergence of additive manufacturing, data science, renewed interest on data science and data analytics. 
and then uh, all other technologies like blockchains and all these things these are uh, uh, these are going to uh, reform and transform on each and every sphere uh, of our you know the surroundings in that context this industry 4.0 if we look at it this entire things will be uh, governed by automation robotics and uh, you know the remote work processing then uh, then uh, in our other areas be it education sectors we are observing some significant uh, in interventions and significant penetrations of ai in the form of different uh, online courses in the form in the form of uh, you know this um, uh, our uh, assessment and evaluation processes and many other formats it is impacting all these uh, existing practices and it is all these existing practices are again getting transformed in our social sectors also in, uh, this laws and order all these things that can be monitored that can be exercised properly with this help of artificial enable, artificial intelligence enabled technologies so this is a great occasion where uh, what is the latest state of affairs or development in this particular field? How the researchers are working in this fascinating field in for uh, taking care of different challenging scenario of this world, particularly after this outbreak of COVID-related pandemic scenario. Many, you know, these difficult situations uh, have emerged, uh, uh, which was unforeseen uh, uh, in, so far in this entire globe. And that has been, uh, you know, this taken care by uh, technology-enabled solutions and uh, in near future also, uh, how all these technologies are, are shaping the entire things. That is a very interesting thing to observe and to learn. To learn. So my advice to all the participants who are present over here, kindly engage yourselves in uh, the process of active learning. Active learning means uh, when you will be listening to the lectures delivered by these experts in their field, kindly take a note, kindly uh, validate your understanding and observation by studying, you know, these different related literatures, because there is no dark of information, there is no dark of, you know, these resource materials um, uh, by which you can always uh, uh, make yourselves uh, more learned, because this is an area where self-learning and continuous learning is going to be more important. And these are the opportunities where you can know how, you know, these researchers, experts in these fields, they are, are taking care of all these things. So uh, I believe that uh, this uh, international uh, this conference will be even self to those learning uh, community who are seriously interested in pursuing their career, who are seriously pursuing in, in the field of engineering and technology, who are seriously interested in pursuing the researchers, in doing their existing practices in a better format. So uh, this will be a golden opportunities for all of them. And uh, I wish all the success for this uh, international conference. My best uh, uh, wishes for uh, Dr. Shomopal and all the team members uh, of uh, St. Mary's uh, Group of Institute for organizing this very, very relevant uh, international conference in the present time. And uh, my thanks to uh, all the resource persons because they, this is the beauty of uh, digital technology at any point of time from any corners of this globe. Uh, this uh, We can get connected. We can uh, share our views, knowledges, and uh, this is breaking the barrier of time and space. Now, this how best you are taking leverage of this changing scenario of this technology, that is to be looked into. And I believe that um, the inspired faculty members, this uh, management, and uh, all these uh, stakeholders associated with St. Mary's Group of Institute, they will make it happen. They will make all this entire session very, very engaging, very, very enriching for all the participants who are present over here. With this, I'd like to conclude. Thank you once again for inviting me and for allowing me to share my views among you. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for your motivational pitch. Now, I would like to request our principal, sir, Dr. S. Pal, to present him a certificate as a token of honor. Sir, please. Thank you, Honorable Vice Chancellor, sir, for your motivational as well as informative speech and the wishing message. And uh, may I now request to uh, uh, Madam, uh, humble, we are humble offering a small token of thank appreciation. You thank, you, thank you, thank you very much. Sir, please accept it. Thank you. Thank sir, you, sir. Thank, thank you. May I now request uh, our honorable secretary, Sri K. Senior Sir Sashank Sir, Patron of this International Conference, 
to share a few words and a wishing message. Sir. Uh, um, thank you, everyone. A very good morning to, to all of you. And uh, a special thanks to Professor Saiket Mitra, sir, Honorable Vice Chancellor, for your uh, detailed and valuable message given on this occasion. And I also thank all the guests uh, who are present in this international seminar conference on informatics, artificial intelligence, and intelligence system. They are all, I'd like to say that this is a very relevant topic in the coming time in the future. So any information on this topic is in the academic fraternity going forward is going to be very important for how our personal life, how our work life, everything going to be interrelated and everything is going to be involved with Industry 4.0 technologies. So all the academicians who are going to participate today and all the keynote speakers, students, and all other members who are being part of this uh, conference today. Uh, it is going to be a very value added uh, program. If you see in the world today, the countries which are going to be at the forefront of these industry 4.0 technologies are going to surely have an advantage. So having more conferences like this and thinking of various views that are put forward here and having an edge in these industry 4.0 technologies is going to be very important to our country as well. And I congratulate all the organizing committee members who have made this possible on this digital platform and all the participants, students and faculty and all other uh, well-wishers who are here today. This is going to be, as Vice Chancellor has said, this is going to be a very enriching experience to all of us. And uh, all of you, please bring forward your ideas. And I hope this should be a very knowledge enriching experience to all of you. And thank you all once again for having me. And uh, let us proceed further. Thank you all so much. Thank you, sir. Now I would like to request our principal, sir, to give the, as the honor of certificate, honor of thing to certificate to our secretary, sir, Shasham, sir. Sir, please. Thank you, sir, for your motivational speech and wishing message and your blessings. Uh, may I request organizing uh, secretary to share a small token of appreciation to our honorable secretary, sir. Sir, please accept it. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank sir. You. Thank you. Thank you. Now, I'd like to request Dr. P.K. Pal, sir, to, form the, to request the person from the desk of Edu NGI, Innovative Intelligence of Singapore, Mr. Gabin Kumarji. So, so, as everyone is aware that this conference is officially organized by jointly by the Edu India Innovative, which is a Singapore and India-based solution and <clears throat> manpower development company. We are fortunate enough that the CEO and founder, and he is also the patron of this international conference of informatics, artificial intelligence, and intelligence system Iconisys 2021. So we are fortunate enough that service up. I would like to request to say few words regarding this conference and also about Edu Innovative Intelligence on this August gathering. So over to Govind Kumar, sir, to say a few words. Uh, okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Paul, and thank you uh, uh, to the organizing committee. Uh, on behalf of uh, ADU NDI, uh, uh, you know, I want to extend my uh, warmest wishes uh, to everyone. Um, I think this is a great opportunity, and uh, because artificial intelligence, you know, is a very important uh, field that is sweeping everyone. Uh, and the impact is only going to increase uh, in the years to come. Uh, I just want to say this, okay. Uh, I, I don't know, you know, the age group of uh, the audience. Uh, if you, uh, you know, if you are young enough, you may not know. If you are in your mid-age, you know this. 
what is AI is similar to what happened for the computerization in the 80s. Okay. Uh, the what happened in computerization uh, in the 80s is important, right? Uh, there was a lot of resistance. There was even fear. But today you see computers are there everywhere. The same thing is happening, you know, in the area of artificial intelligence. Um, you know, we are in the very early days. Uh, it is going to impact us in a very big way uh, in the coming years and decades. Uh, a great opportunity for India to move from uh, a low-income country to a middle-income country. And uh, it is a great opportunity in terms of employment opportunities also. Because you will know that uh, uh, the computerization, many people picked up computer skills, went to US, you know, started companies. A lot of things happened, right? A similar thing is happening in a small way and it will increase intensity in the coming uh, months, uh, coming years and decades. So great opportunity. Uh, I uh, extend my wishes and invite, you know, all the dignitaries and the organizing committee once again. Um, so Dr. Soumya Pal, Dr. Paul, thank you once again, you know, for your support in this. So uh, thank you for this opportunity. Uh, over to you, Dr. Paul. Okay. Thank you, thank sir. You, sir. Thank you. Now, I would like to request Dr. P. K. Pal, sir, to present the certificate as a token of honor to Gavin Kumar, sir. So, I think, the uh, sir, uh, we, on behalf of this uh, Iconisys 2021, offer you this small token of appreciation for your kind effort and for your valuable advice and organizing this international conference. Kindly accept this as a patron of this international conference. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Now I would like to request Mr. Shubhruji Dev, the convener of this international conference, to come on the stage, come on the stage or the podium, whatever you can say in the virtual mode, to say a few words about this. So please, Shubhruji. Am I audible? Yes, yes, yes. You are audible. Please continue. Okay, thanks. Sir. A very good morning to our chief guest. Honorable Vice Chancellor of Moulana Abul Kalam Ajad University of Technology, Professor Shoykar Mitra Shah, Chief Pratton and Honorable Chairman of St. Mary's Group of Institution, Dr. K. B. K. Rao Shah, Pratton and Honorable Vice President of St. Mary's Group of Institution, Srimati K. B. N. B. Bharati Devi, Madam, Pratton and Honorable Secretary of St. Mary Group of Institution, Sri K. Sri Harsha Sashankar, Patton, and Founder and President of A2NDI, Sri Gobind Kumar Sir, International Advisor and the Director of School of Computational and Professor of Computer Science and Engineering of Mohanana Abul Kalam Ajat University of Technology, Professor Devasis Desar, co-patron and vice president of Edu NDI, Professor Vijay Kumar Varadaranjan said, all system chairs, general chair and principal of St. Mary Technical Campus, Kolkata, Professor Sumo Palset, program chair and CEO and executive director MCIS and Assistant Professor of Raniganj, Raiganj University, Dr. P. K. Palser, Honorable Speakers, Professor Susil Sharma, Associate Dean, Professor M. C. B. Ball State University, USA, Professor Damodar Gurapu, Vice Chancellor, Chaitanya Dean to be University, Telangana, Dr. Vinay Kumar, Associate Professor and Program Manager, MIT World Peace University, Pune, Sri Gobind Kumar, CEO and President, EDU NDI Innovative Intelligence, 
co convener Dr. Kapun Sarkar, organizing secretary Srimuti Sujita Mukherjee, executive member and vice principal of St. Mary Technical Campus, Kolkata, Madhuri Varchat, Madam, all executive members, my fellow colleagues, and my dear students. I take great pride in welcoming all of you in the International Conference on Informatics, Inter Artificial Intelligence and Intelligence Systems organized by Edu NDI Innovative Intelligence Singapore and India in association with St. Mary Technical Campus, Kolkata. I would like to thank Edu NDI and St. Mary Technical Campus, Kolkata for taking this great initiative to enlighten young minds. We all know that artificial intelligence is advancing at a great speed globally and so through this conference, we aim to provide a broad spectrum of knowledge on artificial intelligence and transformation to students and young professionals. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. May I now request uh, Dr. Devashi today? One of our international advisors of this Icon is 2021. And I Yeah. Very good morning to everyone, to all the guests and dignitaries. Uh, it is my pleasure to be here in this conference of AI. And uh, I'd like to congratulate all the organizers for, for organizing this uh, beautiful conference, and which is very timely and uh, which is important for the young generation because AI is governing us for the last few decades. Now we are preparing the driverless car, we are preparing the very interesting uh, and intelligent age based system. Our consumer electronics product, also now intelligent. I've seen that some of the talks will be on smart uh, age-based systems. So we are getting smart and also very, uh, you know, to organize our system. And moreover, you know, presently we are coming, going through uh, some of the AI technology. On the participant time you need yourself. All the participants, I request you kindly mute yourself. Sir, please continue. Sir, please continue. There was a sir. Please continue. Devashi sir, please continue. Devashi, sir, what are you doing? 
Professor Devansh is there. You may call him, please. Actually, uh, uh, Madhuri Madam is having uh, some uh, problem related to audio. Uh, please bear with us uh, just few uh, few seconds. Uh, hopefully, she will be joining. I don't soon. know what happened to the internet connection. Hello. Okay. Yes. Sir, yes. Please, please Very continue. Sorry sir. for the glitch. Yeah. Please continue. Please continue. Yes. Yes. Continue. See, uh, what I was discussing that uh, that we are in a responsible AI, right? so ai is now responsible for the decisions what is making and ai is also providing the privacy to our system so uh, i wish all the best for this conference and also there is some intelligent system there is a theme is intelligent system so some of the intelligent products are coming up in the market and which can take autonomous decisions like autonomous drones and everything so these are very important technology and uh, i wish uh, that we will discuss uh, you know in detail of this technologies and it will be helpful for the society and we call the best of this conference and we can get all of knowledge related to this ai based uh, technologies thank you thank you very much thank you sir for coming with in this conference on virtual mode i would like to request somupal sir for a, as a token of honor to present a certificate sir please Thank you, Professor Jain, for your for your inspiring message, and uh, obviously the all the audience have been really benefited with this technical knowledge. And may I now uh, request on behalf of IQS 2021, sir, this is a small uh, token of uh, uh, honor and appreciation. We are offering this small token of appreciation to you, sir. Please accept it, sir. Thank you, thank you, Professor Jain. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you, madam. Yeah. Good evening, madam. Now I would like to request our vice principal, Saint Mary's Technical Campus of Kolkata, for her vote of thanks. Thank you, madam. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Ma'am, am I audible now? Am I audible? Yeah, clearly, clearly, clearly. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, a warm and cherished honey to our honourable Vice Chancellor, Sir Professor Shulpit Munshu, Moolana Abul Kalam Azad University of Technology, 
our honorable chairman sir our respected president madam respected secretary sir our respected principal sir and our most valued invited speakers guests all our faculty members and students it's my privilege to propose a vote of thanks on this international conference ico nic 2021 i on behalf of st mary's technical campus kolkata and edu nti innovating intelligence and the entire fraternity of management here together extend a very hearty heartfelt gratitude to all for gracing your important one and to will make this international conference most valuable firstly i like to give our thanks to our honorable chairman sir dr rev k v k rao for his inspiration we are all inspired and encouraged by his great words always i also like to give my thanks to our present madam shrimati k v n v bharti devi and our secretary sir shri k shri harsh shashank without their support it was not possible to organize this international conference i on behalf of the organizing committee convey deep regards and hearty thanks to our honorable vice chancellor professor shorkut mohtar sir molana abul kazam azad university of technology for his presence despite of his busy schedule we are highly thankful to shri govind kumar founder and president of ito ndi innovating intelligence and to professor vijay kumar vardaraj vice president of ito ndi for their encouragement continuous support and to advises which have greatly helped towards the successful organization of ico nic 2021 i have no words strong enough to express my gratitude to dr p k paul executive director ncis and assistant professor cis of raigand university for his enormous support in the organizing of this international conference it would not have been possible to organize this international conference without him i also take this opportunity to express my deep gratitude to all the advisory committee members professor shoykut mohtar vice chancellor molana abul kazam university of technology professor anil vuimali vice chancellor raigand university professor p s akhan vice chancellor srinivas university karnataka Professor Vasiru Arumu, Vice Chancellor, Crown University; Professor Damodar Guru, Vice Chancellor, Chetne Jinch University, Telangana; Professor Sandeep Pothar, Deputy Vice Chancellor, Research and Innovation, Lincoln University, Malaysia. Our sincere thanks to Dr. Devashish Singh, Director, School of Computational Science. Professor Department of Computer Science and Engineering, Maulana Abul Kalam Azad University of Technology. well an event like this cannot happen overnight the wheel start rolling months ago it requires planning and a bird's eyes for details i would like to take this opportunity to place on record our hearty thanks to our principal sir dr shomobal for his perfect guidance and motivation we have been fortunate enough to be backed by him all of us I take this opportunity to thank all the national and international technical program committee members for providing their valuable comments in time and help towards the improvement of quality of papers presented in the conference. My thanks go to our knowledge partner research and training division New Delhi Publisher our conveyor Mr Shubhrajit Dey co conveyor Dr. Tapan Sarkar and Organizing Secretary Simiti Suchita Mukherjee for their continuous efforts to make this international company successful. I am also thankful to all our executive members for their support. My thanks also go to all the faculty members, staff and students for their constant support. On our part, we have also made sincere efforts to enhance the quality of the company. i once again thank everyone whose contribution has made this conference a successful conference thank you thank you ma'am for your beautiful speech now i'd like to 
hand over the session to our principal, sir, Dr. Shomopal, for the keynote addresses. Thank you, sir. Sir, you are muted. Sir, please, Shomopal, sir. Sir, you are muted, Shomopal, sir. Sir, please unmute the mic. Yeah. Thank you, Sujita, madam. Uh, we have now the end of our inaugural session, and now we will be starting our keynote sessions for keynote lectures and invited lectures. So, I want to uh, introduce uh, Professor Shunil Sharma, sir. So, may I request Dr. P.K. Paul, sir? So, Please yes. request me to yes, come in on the Yes, sir. So uh, now yes. we are welcoming our one of the important and most valuable resource person, uh, Professor Sushil Sharma, sir, with us. Uh, as everyone is know by the speaker profile, sir has huge contribution in different field of academics, administration, information systems. Sir is a Dean of Operations and also Professor of Information Systems in uh, Ball State University, Indiana, USA. Now I would like to request our organizing team to kindly share the brief profile of Sir to the audience. Sure, sir. I'll do it. Professor Shushil Sharma. He is an associate dean and a professor of computer information systems in the Miller College of Business at Ball State University. Dr. Sharma also has the unique distinction of earning two doctoral degrees. He has over, over 25 years of administrative leadership experience and more than 30 years of experience in higher education. Dr. Sharma served as the chair for the Department of Information Systems and Operations Management from 2008 to 2012 and executive director of the MBA and other certificate programs from 2011 to 2013. He has co-authored, edited, co-edited 13 books and published over 100 research papers in different international and national journals. And 46 referred chapters in various books also published under 165 papers in various national and international conferences. He also working as an associate professor position in the Indian Institute of Management, Lucknow, India, and, visit, and visiting research associate professors at the University of Waterloo, Canada. His primary governance, e-learning, and research interests are in IT options and information systems, and company communications, computer information systems, security, human, and social informatics he received and also in the health in informatics and community and social informatics he received three high level outstanding awards outstanding researcher outstanding faculty and outstanding administrator and ball state university we are lucky enough to have such persons such knowledgeable persons with us who will share his knowledge within this plat virtual platform of this international conference. Thank you, sir. Over to Shushil Sharma, sir. Shushil Thank you. Thank you very much and very good morning. Uh, it's 12.30 here in America and I'm sure it must be around 10 o'clock in India. So have a great evening, great morning. So when Dr. Paul, I'm grateful to Dr. Paul and the organizing committee to make me a part of this event. When he reached out to me requesting if I could share some of my remarks for this conference, the interesting part was I noted the title of the conference, which was three key words, informatics, artificial intelligence and intelligent systems. And that's where I thought, what could I say 
in this conference. So let me begin with how I see these three key words as part of this conference. And then I come to the topic which I have thought of sharing with my, all of you. Before I go to the topic, you know, the I like to re-emphasize one interesting point that in the world of 21st century, um, internet literacy or media literacy or virtual literacy has become mandatory for all of us. And if you want to participate in any such virtual conference, we need to be well versed with it. I saw a lot of people struggling, either they could not mute themselves or unmute themselves. I think it's a dire need for also the conference organizer to create few slides and share with the participant in advance what they are supposed to be do's and do not. Recently here, a lot of professors, when they suddenly had to switch off uh, to the virtual settings, they ended up losing job because they didn't know how, what to do and not to do in the virtual settings. So I think all of us, we need to respect now this virtual mode as a normal mode. This is not going to be an exception here onwards. And we need to be well versed with that. And this is only that as a teacher, a little bit of just a kind of caution. Let me just come back to the topic. What is the common between these three key words? Informatics, artificial intelligence, and intelligent system. Beneath this, computers. All three have computers beneath this. So, you know, it's a very interesting story. When 1955, first time computers were used in the organization, the keyword came computerization. And that keyword continued till 1970. And that time, a lot of programs which were created in various universities worldwide, they were named computer engineering or computer science, although they also evolved um, they also evolved from electrical engineering and some other offshoot programs. But the keywords came computer science and computer engineering. When these programs were evolving, same time the business schools particularly, they were struggling that they have to use the same computers in the business organizations. So they thought we could come out with some programs different than the computer science and computer engineering. Computer science and computer engineering may be teaching more of the theoretical foundations, how tools are created, how technology tools are created for use in organization. And business schools thought we can take those tools and tell teach students how to use those tools in the business organizations. And that's where they came out with the new terminologies for their programs, information systems and information technology. So for a while, there were two set of programs in the university, computer science, computer engineering, information system, information technology. One was from a science college, another wow. or engineering college, another was from a business college. And later on, due to the success of all these programs, they realized that we could also create a blend of two together. And that's where the keyword came, informatics. So informatics in a very crude way, half computer science, half information system, or half information technology. I'm just trying this uh, to uh, define it in the beginning so that when I use some of these terminologies, all of us are on the same page. Second keyword, artificial intelligence. So let me come to the artificial intelligence story. When I was doing undergraduate program in early 70s, uh, since computerization was the key uh, terminology which was used, uh, we were all taught to learn some languages or some basics of computer systems so that we could 
develop system in organizations. We could mechanize systems. And that time, first uh, kind of a output which we created in the organizations were called data processing systems. So what we did, we used computers. And we said now that computer could be used to compute payroll, salary of a employees in our company, or we could use this computer software hardware to gather for calculating the inventory uh, in a typical in an inventory control system. So we were trying to identify some of these application areas. And in those application areas, we were trying to develop the software and we were trying to create this system called data processing system. So that time, the key terminologies which came into existence, data processing system, computer processing system, transaction processing system, they were all for the same purpose, that they were trying to record all these transactions electronically. So the key word was, in my company, I can record some of the transaction electronically. So when I need to get those information or records back, I can quickly retrieve back quickly as compared to manually where the data or information must be put in manual files. So while this was going on as an evolution, the companies thought, great, I have now data processing system, but I have only in few areas. I don't have in all the areas in a company. And that's where they thought of slowly getting towards ERP, Enterprise Resource Planning, where they thought, let's not pick one area, two areas to apply computers. Let's think the entire enterprise and the entire transactions of the company to be digitalized and they to be recorded in electronic, uh, in the enterprise resource planning system. People like me, I then who were working in a company, we thought, okay, report coming to my desk is a great report. It's well, nice print out. What do I do with that? Instead of a coming file to me, now I have a nice printout. I still have to make my decision using my criteria. And this is where the researcher thought that when I make my decision, I consider a lot of permutation and combination. I want to create 10 different scenarios, 10 different situations so that I can pick one of the best, which I think as per me would be appropriate for that situation. So the programmers and the researchers now thought that apart from these transactions, can we build the decision-making criteria also in the system so that the system can generate me eight or 10 scenarios which was also technically terms as sensitivity analysis or what if scenario. If I have a what if scenario, I can change certain input to play around with this and get different alternatives. And out of those different alternatives, then I can use my, this is my decision. And those systems at that time were termed as decision support system which basically means now the decision makers not only are presented with their data, but they are also their, their decision-making criteria is also pre-programmed in the system. And a lot of work which they had to do manually is now helped by the computer itself. By And in this what-if scenario, decision maker was changing some of the inputs and creating multiple alternatives to take the decisions quickly and more effectively. So decision support systems in early 80 became the key technology. And everybody in organization thought that organization can function better only if decision support systems are created along with data processing systems. Well, that was done. Great. Now the thing came 
that researchers thought what next? They thought now, let's say for a decision A, I had created 10 alternatives. I changed the input and I created 10 scenarios. And finally I chose one of them. So let's say scenario fifth. I did not record my action, scenario fifth, and why I did not select other scenarios, which basically means if somebody else comes in my desk, in my center, and he wants to make a decision, then he may still have to create those 10 scenarios and he may choose scenario six. And that's where researchers thought, can we build in some intelligence to the systems based on the past history so that I myself may not have to take a decision. Machine itself can throw me the choice. And that is where the two key terminologies came at that time. One was called expert system, which basically means expertise of an expert or a decision maker is pre-programmed so that machine itself can throw the best alternative. Or some systems were termed artificial intelligence system by saying now machine is capable, machine is already pre-recorded with all those different scenarios and capable to make a decision like a decision maker. And that's where the key terminology evolved, artificial intelligence. Initially, it was more applied to a situations more like a medical applications. Slowly, it got more into the science application. And now it's getting into all application. So that's where second terminology, artificial intelligence came into existing. And as I was listening to some of the keynote speakers uh, during the inaugural part, uh, everybody was emphasizing that now it's going to only go better and better. So the better we understand this artificial intelligence, better it is for all of us. Third terminology is intelligent system. And this is where there's a little chaotic. What do you mean by intelligent system? So this is where now, what we are saying now, artificial intelligence we thought is a one branch where you can program or you can prepare a machine or an application to be an intelligent like human being, which is called artificially intelligent. But now we are saying it's not a just one application. Every device, every system could be an intelligent, just like your phone, which we call smartphone or intelligent phone. So that's where the relevance of intelligent system come into existence. So I'm glad the organizer thought this as a topic. Informatics, which basically means the application of computer science, more in all application, initially it was very selective. Artificial intelligence, more and more machines are capable to make their own decisions. And intelligent system, which already is becoming part of us. So. This is where, when I thought of what topic I should select for my presentation, and this is where my presentation begins. So I took a long background, but the next I would have quick go through my slides. Uh, let me know if I have a permission to share my screen. I think I have. All right, so, so this is where now the concept comes to. I will quickly go through some of these slides and I will not run through the slide. These I have already shared with the Dr. Paul. He can share with all of you. You can go through this. Uh, and even while I'm going through this, if you have these slides, get ready your question because I love to interact answering the question. So I'm expecting a lot many questions and I may also alert you that for each question, I'm going to give $2. So if it depends 
on you if you want to take the $2 per question. Smart questions will have $5. So let's get ready. All right. So now we have a three key terminologies I explained. So intelligent system, artificial intelligence, and informa informatics. All these three together came at a time uh, somewhere in two, uh, two, 2000 onwards, where a major breakthrough came in form of IoT, Internet of Things. And one of the earlier speaker mentioned Industry 4.0. As again, just as a quick background, I should tell you, uh, earlier to 17th century, we call that uh, mechanized, uh, before mechanized age. And then we got industrial revolution uh, in 18th century. Then we call it electronic revolution. And then from 1970 onwards, we call it a uh, industry revolution three, which was a major internet and electronic base. And 2000 onwards, we call industry 4.0. What is this industry 4.0 or what is this industrial revolution 4.0? What it says now is that all the gadgets, all the devices can have their own uh, identity. And those that are based on those identities, these devices can speak to each other. At my home, my uh, Alexa, which is an Amazon device, speaks to my light system, speak to my music system, and I simply say, Alexa, what is the temperature today? It finds out for me the temperature. Any question I have, in fact, you know, it's uh, uh, earlier we used to say that for all your question, uh, the answer is Dr. Google. You, you text it and Dr. Google will give you answer. Now, the next stage is Google itself has their Echo and uh, many other devices, just like uh, Alexa does for Amazon. So now the next stage is, uh, hey, Alexa, uh, uh, is it going to rain today? And Alexa tells me, yeah, possibly at 2 o'clock, which basically means all these devices can talk to each other. Refrigerator can talk to the air conditioner. Air conditioner can talk to Alexa. Alexa can talk to my the, the opening door system or security system. And that is one of the major breakthrough came as part of the industry 4.0 in form of internet of things. So the first thing happened that uh, all these devices have their own identity. They are internet enabled and they can talk to each other device, any other device, wherever it is. That's the first, which basically means we can create some sensor and actuators all over in city or all over in the environment and they will make sure that these uh, different gadgets and devices will talk to each other or in, respond to each other's signals. And now you build some intelligence in that, you build some uh, smartness in that, so that not only they can share the information, but they can also take decisions on their own. And this is where the key terminology came, smart. And I used as the uh, titled for my uh, presentation, Smartness in the artificial, Intelli in an artificial Intelligence Age, which basically means we are all going to deal with the smart environment. And this is what I um, wrote it, that smart environment, smart world, smart city, smart classroom, smart campus, smart university, smart watch, all over everything you are going to see smart. And now people say, what is the difference uh, between smartness and intelligence? Well, intelligence is part of smartness. Smartness is the output. Some people, some authors in literature use this interchangeably. They call smart as intelligent or intelligent as a smart. It doesn't matter whether you use one or other. The connotation that you should understand that these gadgets, this my, now the watch which I'm wearing, not only tells me that actually since I got up in the morning at 5.30, I've been awake, I've been this much steps I have walked today, this is my heart rate, this much calorie I have burned. Everything is not only here, but in the app, 
and I have set some filter in the app, it tells me that this is the time I have to go to bed or this is the time you need to do the following things. And these filters must have been set by me. So look at now the environment we are living, how much advantage you have, all the health related alerts proactively sent to you. You don't go to the physicians reactively when you get into problem, but proactively you can be your own physician you can monitor every health related measurement on your own through these devices. And not only that, it's very interesting. Recently, uh, some of the Panasonic and other, they already have created that uh, based on your diet plan or your meal plan, it can also send the signal to the cooker and the cooker can help you to uh, mix those recipes, uh, recipes that you could use for your meal, which means you can always eat the healthy food. That's what is the topic of my presentation, smartness, smart environment. So you can go through some of these uh, you know, slides, but let me pick up. Uh, so these are the thing you must be hearing. Internet of thing is the beneath the requirement to get this smartness. Internet of Things, artificial intelligence, or machine learning, all these key terminologies work behind the smartness. And then you can go through the smart infrastructure, smart home. You know, the many years back uh, when this concept of smart home came or intelligent building came, uh, here in states, they started uh, building some of the smart home or start building. So I was very curious as part of the technology proponent. So I started visiting some of these buildings and what they are right now also, and many of the people now have already started making them as their home. What it means as I walk in my home, uh, they understand where I need to switch on my light, where I go as soon as I enter the home, what temperature I, I feel comfortable for myself, what music I want the music to, to be played. All these are already built in the home. So they sense, there are sensors, they sense through my retina, the, through the cameras they are built in, who I am. And based on that, they start playing the music. Or as I walk, what time of the day, what kind of music I like. It. So in my home, even in this practical home, uh, I, I built, uh, I have now each room have a different uh, music play. My daughters, they have a different liking. My wife has a different liking. Even the wall, uh, you know, the paintings, electronic paintings, they get displayed differently in each room. So it is like a dynamic settings, dynamic environment. That's what it means smart home. That's what it means smart environment around. Um, I was involved in a few projects like smart cities. Now think of that, you know, when I come to Delhi and other places, so much traffic you go out and then some roads, you know, some sometimes uh, if there's a holdup on one side that gets bigger and bigger and then the traffic on other sides gets stuck. So if you have some of these smart uh, traffic signals, they can see and moderate accordingly the traffic. Nobody, uh, the cops don't have to regulate that, cops doesn't have to moderate that and it could be done automatically by the system and the entire uh, city could be managed much better. Recently, uh, many of you must have seen the application like what they call trash system or parking system. It's pretty common here in states that you go to the airport and if you want to park your car, earlier they used to be five, six stories and you have to go to each floor to look for where is the weekend space where you can park your vehicle. Now, as soon as you enter, it says floor third, 45th space is empty. So you can directly go there. Or for the trash picking system, uh, in the morning, uh, the back end, uh, they come to know in the city which area the trash is full, and they can just go and pick it up and clear it. And some of these are all applications based on IoT and the smartness which is built into the system. So, there, there's a lot of these slides that you can go through and looking at the time constraint, I will straight away go to now. On one hand, this is great that you have this smart home, smart building, 
uh, you know, there's a lot of advantage. Nowadays, uh, Tesla and some companies, Google, they have created these autonomous cars. Uh, some of my friends, when I talk to them, or we have in the meetings, they attend meeting while they're in the cars. And these cars are self-driven. And these cars are driven in San Francisco, one of the, you know, the heavy congested area. And they are using it effectively. There's, uh, you know, nobody driving car. They are attending meeting, doing all other stuff. It's They have already programmed the destination, indicated the destination, and all this is wise control. Hey, take me to there. Some of the grandparents are sending their grandkids uh, to different, perp, uh, you know, venues, simply saying they, they need to be there and they don't need to drive. So there are a lot of AI machine learning embedded into these smart systems, which is helping the, uh, the organization. Uh, smart city, smart world, smart campus. Uh, nowadays, actually, uh, I can, as a professor, not only when I go to my uh, LMS, I can find out that when I uploaded my material, who all have gone through that material, how much time the person engaged themselves. I can do all those analytics uh, information in advance, and accordingly, I can personalize, uh, I can customize uh, my, my uh, lessons or my teaching, because I would know how much time each one is spending and how much learning uh, is effective in those. So there is also a smart campus that as you walk in, you are already taken, if you are in the library, that information is sent to other part of the campus. If you are in the registrar office, and all this information can, all these uh, different, whether they are sensor and actuators built in the building or in the doors or in certain pathways, they can send all these signals and you can all the time be tracked. So on one hand, this has a positiveness, but on the second hand side, you also have a uh, lot of negatives. So I'll go straight away before I invite some question. There are a lot of security risk in smart system. The very first is that the more and more smarter systems are, they are good for you because they are, they act like a assistants working for you. So your life is much easier, but at the same time, you become targeted attacks. If those systems are compromised, you have nothing to back on. And that's where is one of the bigger problem. If my Alexa starts, uh, you know, dysfunctioning, and if my light starts dysfunctioning, I have no manual way to get into that. So I have to rely on that. So I, th that's a vulnerability. Um, I also, because I'm using these devices, um, these watches and others, I'm tracked full time. Uh, there is an app called uh, 360 Live, and using that, in fact, many of the families here have been using for, for their kids. Wherever they go, they're all the time monitored by the family. So if as a kid, if my daughter says that I'm in the university, I'm looking at my app, I can say she's not in the university, she's at this place. In fact, they tell you 3D view. And they, they say that she's right now in this particular restaurant. So people are all the time tracked. So you lose your privacy. Uh, you also, uh, if, if it is compromised, it can also have identity theft. It has a location tracking. It also have a home intrusion because if I'm tracked and if they know I'm not in home, people can also intrude in that at your home. Uh, there could also be appliance or property damage. Uh, there is also uh, data manipulation. What happens if some of these softwares are outdated? Since the home is smart, I have to keep up every time with the newer version. So there's extra cost for that. So I have, and what happened if there's a power outage or technology failure? I'm stuck. I not even to get out of the home because if my door is smart, uh, um, it will see me as an intruder if I try to break that or how to get out if it is fully electronically, uh, you know, the closed. Hacking is one of, uh, hacking through the cloud. A lot of, com lot of hackers are targeting these cloud and edges, what we call cloud computing and edge computing as their target. Uh, batteries with all these apps running, and many of these apps are running through your smartphones, your batteries are draining too fast. And that's where now smartphone markets are growing so fast. They are trying to give you 
much quicker the next versions because they they addict you or oh, use more apps and the, once you start using more apps the side effects are that your batteries would be uh, one of the consequence of that autonomous weapon and that's one of the biggest problem i think i was reading uh, that some of the drones in the past few days were used uh, in certain geographic regions in india for attack and these autonomous region the weapons are pretty much like you know as i said autonomous vehicles autonomous cars they are self driven one hand they are positive side of it they create they create a lot of advantage on other hand they 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 are used as a weapon and so researchers now have to find how to counter them data poisoning uh, some of the hacking or some of the security breaches nowadays is just poisoning the system poisoning the networks and i'm sure many of you are technical people so you know what it means when somebody says poisoning data or poisoning networks it can destroy your dns it can destroy your dhs and suddenly you would see the people will uh, be imposters they will pretend to be one but they may be another i try to conclude my slide saying technology with all its promise and potential has gotten so far beyond human control that is threatening the future of human kind and these are the words from kim vincente and now i like to invite some questions thanks for your time as i said i'm grateful to the organizer dr paul for making me part of this event and i look forward some question and dale is straight away two dollar for good question five dollar for smart question thank you very much thank you sir for your most valuable lecture on different aspects as you said i have very uh, personally before moving to other questions i have my own one question that is uh, you talk that in business school started the informatics but somewhere we also learn that informatics and information science not information technology i'm talking about informatics and information science are started as a i school school of information science i schools so this is also moving i have seen in different parts of the world so how you see these things means computer school then moving to i schools information schools where information science and informatics are the prime focus so how you would like to differentiate is there any difference between information science and informatics or it is just a different name thank you thank you a great question um some of these got evolved out of uh, compulsion when computer science programs were growing and they were uh, at some level saturated they thought of creating another title of these degrees and that's where information science information science still is more related in a literature towards the library based information systems but some school as you said rightly they use information science as a generic level and under information science they still have a system of the computer science as a program informatics whereas is created more in the area of application and one of the uh, more popular area for informatics is health informatics this started in us where they thought health is a big sector where computers could be used extensively and so initially they started with the emr so uh, electronic medical records and that's where they started making use of it and they got they call this as a separate application area as a health informatics and then based on health informatics sucks as they thought informatics could also be in other areas so whether it is a media informatics or whether it is another form of informatics the prime line as i mentioned beneath is all knowledge of computer science and knowledge of information system blended together so this is where the problem comes if you are with a non conventional degree you know in engineering you have electrical mechanical civil everybody understand all employer employers understand but the moment you come say engineering management then the employer ask what it is then you say it is a half engineering half management then you say okay can you do this if you are found to be a useful having a aptitude to solve the problems in any particular engineering then they don't care what level you have 
But certainly for if you are a little abnormal in the market, the first go is how to convince the potential employers where your strengths are. Is it on computer science or is it on the information system side? So sometimes you go through those dualities, but beneath it, it is the same thing <laughs> under different titles. So that's the why, that's why, as you told that artificial intelligence has changed the whole system. That's why I think universities, colleges have also started intelligent system, artificial intelligence as an academic program, the bachelor's, master's on the subject also throughout the world is rising. Due to this, I think, your, these uh, challenges and these opportunities of artificial intelligence and intelligent system. Yeah, in the last 35 years or over 35 year, years of my experience in academia, I have seen variations. So computer science programs got evolved into software engineering, another title. And now they are going machine learning, they're going data science, they're going artificial intelligence. Basically what they are doing is that as I was giving you the evolutionary historical background, that they are saying how, how to make the systems more and more intelligent, how to make, how to, how to transfer the human intelligence power to these uh, systems, because nobody can deal with 50 million transactions of uh, Amazon's every day manually. So not only they are to be dealt electronically, but they are to be interpreted electronically. They are to be uh, created intelligence electronically. And that's where artificial intelligence uh, it has become the more in the front runner uh, along with the data science. Uh, and those are the two key area where every university, if they have the old computer science programs, they are continuing with them. But at the same time, they are opening these branches, artificial intelligence, data sciences, sometimes combined with the mathematics and computer science together. Sometimes business school are get jumping into it. So it's basically, as I said, it's a evolution as it grows, everybody jumps into it. Okay. And sir, as you said that in USA, health informatics is popular in, in India, in informatics segment, we are popular in geoinformatics and uh, library and information science that is also called library informatics. And very few schools have started health informatics. But in the USA, I have they seen have the there are more specialization like nursing informatics, dental informatics, I have seen. So I think in future, that's why we keep this topic also in our conference because everyone is associated with the informatics. So it should be a uh, great uh, opportunity for everyone. So thanks for your appreciation. Now we have some questions from our chat box. Uh, so Suchita Madam is there. I think we'll read out these uh, uh, questions to sir. Okay, uh, Dr. Paul. Yes, sir. I just want to ask. Uh, First of all, uh, uh, thanks to Professor Sushil Sharma, sir, for your nice informative uh, lectures related to smartness, related to informatics, and uh, hopefully the entire domain of this uh, uh, conference. The, all of you are really delighted, delighted with this uh, lecture. Particularly, personally, I am overwhelmed with this uh, smartness in artificial intelligence age. Uh, lot of questions in my mind, but uh, just uh, uh, one thing uh, I want to uh, share that uh, in our, uh, in case of uh, application areas point of view related to artificial intelligence or machine learning or smartness, uh, where we are, everything where we are using the smart uh, campus, smart city, smart class, everything. So smartness in artificial intelligence, uh, whether there is, uh, there is any, uh, how the security features is associated with that or how it is mentioned, uh, then since uh, there may be a lot of risk factors for the application point of view. Uh, so how these are, uh, the security issues are associated with it, sir, please. Thank you, thank you, great question. I let uh, the moderator to decide whether it is a $2 question or $5 question. I'll not make a call. So you said Suchita Madam will later on tell me whether I... And if I try to corrupt that Dr. Um, Paul's brain, changing one algorithm here and there, 
it'll start behaving differently. It'll start throwing bad decisions. So for hackers, they have so many points for vulnerabilities where they can attack. And that's where I had mentioned targeted attack. So as a security, I also teach uh, cyber security courses. In fact, that's one of my favorite subject. Not only I teach how to, I don't teach how to hack, but how to prevent hacking. In fact, the many years back, maybe 10, 12 years back, I just for promotion my course, I said, you will learn how to hack. And suddenly in my class, there were 100 students and they said, oh, we are excited. I want to learn as a hacker. Then I thought I'm getting into problem because I never taught, I never want to teach anybody how to hack. I want to tell them how to um, identify their systems are compromised and how to prevent hacking. So basically what I mean is now, um, you know, I can run a workshop and a course how to identify those security vulnerabilities at each level. Um, I throw a very, I used to run this a game to my students. You can check your own computer with the Zone Alarm Pro, which is a free version available. Run that on your computer today. It can tell you how many people have already tried to compromise your computer. Your system log will tell you how many people have already broken your system. And this is one of the minimal tool that, that's freely available. I used to use much more um, sophisticated kit. Uh, I used to demonstrate students how, how many times their systems have been compromised. I also you I can also capture a screenshot and tell what you are doing in different parts of the world. So there are plenty of vulnerabilities and that's where security gurus and scientists are working hard to make sure that as these systems get more and more in use, um, how to create safeguards against those security breaches. And that's another whole stream of science of courses and degrees which is working on uh, to make people aware and to earn degrees in those areas where they can make a good career. Uh, surely, Professor Sharma is uh, absolutely right. Uh, this is another another aspect or another issue is not only uh, to hack and how to prevent hacking using some algorithms. And I also, this is one of my research areas, and I do say everywhere that nothing is uh, secure in the book. Uh, anything can be hacked or anything can be cracked at any moment. But uh, the, the strength of the security algorithm depends on how uh, how long it will take to break something like that. Okay. Thanks, Professor Sharma. And uh, there are a few questions, uh, Professor Sharma, already we have seen in the chat box. Uh, may I now request uh, moderator Sushita Madam uh, to read out the questions, please, so that we can also Sushi Sharma, sir, we have got a question from Professor G. Damdun, sir. That was an excellent presentation. Okay, he was very happy. But yes, the thing is that what will be the next smart innovation? Are we going to have a device that reads our thinking too? It's a great question, and this certainly goes as a five dollar question. So um, I, I'm sure. Uh, so this is what it is like. I tell you, I I have a habit of writing. Uh, lot of fictional uh, pieces. So I wrote a fictional piece way back in 1992 when I was a professor at IM Lucknow. And that time I was saying that in future, you may be dealing with the human beings uh, thinking they are human, but you may not realize they may not be human at all and they may be robots. And that is a fictional piece after seeing some of those uh, you know, the Arnold movies or other movies. And today that already has become in some form of reality that you have a human nerve systems and computer automated system working together and it could be half human and half robots. And there are a lot of advantages of that. Uh, there are a lot of uh, things that helping uh, the handicaps, uh, but also there are a lot of vulnerabilities. So the question is, what is going to be the next uh, smartness or smart system? Um, 
One of my fictional piece right now I'm writing that many of the university will be challenged. If I have, uh, let's say today, uh, let me uh, build a scenario. If I appear for IES exam or IPS exam, and I go in that exam, basically I need to answer some 200 or 250 questions. And if I put a Google in my Google chip in my brain, all of you would agree that I would score 100% marks, right? Which basically means I don't need any degree anymore. I don't need any college degree at all. Similarly, already I'm wearing some of these fabrics, what we call wearable clothes, which basically means I have these clothes are electronically censored and they keep my fully track of my body. I know more than any doctor about my body. It sends me alert before even doctors come to know or before I get inspected by them, which mean, basically means I may not need doctors. There may be another surgeon, which is a robo surgeon. In many cases right now, that's what is happening. And there may not be need for the doctors. So the universities are in risk. Professions are in need risk. What the companies want is to get their work done. It doesn't matter whether they have a diploma, degree, master's, PhD, whatever it is. And if those chips are already embedded into the human bodies, I'm just putting this as a fictional piece at this stage, but I'm told that some of these uh, are already, uh, as a prototype, already tested. They are not commercialized yet, but they are already tested. Uh, here in states, in the news, there was that some of these are already implants in the human bodies, and they are testing how far they could go. So next stage of smartness would be where many of these, as I said, half human and half uh, computer system will start working together and will challenge all of us uh, and also the employers uh, that for the relevance of the degrees or uh, the diplomas. Great question, five dollars. Thank you, Professor Sharma, for your clarification. Thank you, sir. Should you check another one? Uh, uh, from the faculty, faculty of St. Mary's, Kolkata campus, Rami Juraja, he has asked that there are too many risks of security breach in AI due to hacking. Now, could we minimize or eliminate these cons of AI system and how? You know, this is a <laughs> this is an interesting story of a human evolution when they change from agriculture to mechanical age and mechanical to electronic age, every age uh, had both pros and cons. You know, when the first time knife was created to help to, uh, you know, cut certain things for the convenience of humans, then people thought that knife is also used for killing the humans, right? So by every system, every technology you create, it will always have pros and it will always have cons. It depends that for the usage, how much uh, you can protect it for com against compromising it and what effort is needed. You know, just to give you an example, when first time people started online transactions, um, many of my friends, and I'm sure many at your ends too, they were apprehensive to do any online transaction. They were fearful that, you know, their credit card information will be online, right? And even today, many of my friends don't do any online transaction. Look, as a technical expert, when I explain to them that the SSL standard that is used for online transaction use two raised to power 127 permutation and combination to encrypt your message, which mean if a person needs to compromise that, it needs 10,000 years to break that algorithm. Does it somebody have 10,000 years? and that too with a high processing power. So the question comes when these hackers try to go online and just take a snap, and in that snap they see, is there a good information? Because they have to see, they have to capture some packet. Uh, they don't know whether it has any value or not, but at the same time they need to be also quickly out of it because they could be caught too. 
So it's a game of work effort uh, trade-off. Uh, when you think of compromising AI tools, uh, would you yourself be compromised in that process? Uh, do they have a stronger safeguards? When I teach security courses, I tell them there is a uh, terminology called honeypot. And honeypot is nothing but a look-alike uh, real system. You create a mirror of that. So the hackers think this is the real website or the real portal or the real server of a company, but they go to honeypot. And when they go to honeypot, this is where we, our security gurus, immediately come to know who are these people coming from where. Not only they can identify them, but they can attack them back so they can compromise their system. So again, security, uh, in fact, I should also tell you a very interesting thing. There are a lot of online um, hackers, uh, groups. I don't advise anybody to become part of this. But these hackers, they keep discussing, uh, they keep sharing some of the tricks online, how to hack into system. They may not, they may not do themselves, but they teach other, and that's why some novices, when they start picking those, they get into a problem. So some hacking uh, hackers, uh, they call it a gray hack, uh, gray hat. You know, the hackers are known black hat, gray hat, and white hat. Gray hat are the one. Who, who are actually security expert in organization, but for security audit, they also act as a hacker, so they get to the black hat. And that's where it's called gray hat. So sometimes it's very interesting that when I go for a company as a security audit expert, actually I'm supposed to tell them how secure their company's infrastructure is, and that's where I become a hacker. And the moment I become a hacker with their permission, I come to know how much their systems are compromised. And then I go other side and I become a security expert, how to prevent them. So there's a very thin line between hackers and security experts. So it is a continuous uh, challenge and a race uh, between these uh, professional hackers and the professional security experts. And uh, the question comes, who can beat the other? So that's a continuously, and this will this race will continue whatever stage of technology evolution is. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. It's a nice answer, sir. Now it's my question, sir. The, should you have to compromise with the privacy for this IA? The, this, uh, of course, informatics and the AI, that is artificial intelligence. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> this is another $5 question. This is a great question. Privacy is really already out of our hands. You know, the interesting part, as you know, and this is what AI is doing, our smartness is doing. You go to a pump, and this is where I was telling you that 360 degree, it's called 360 degree app. So not only it captures on my, smart, my, my phone, it tells me that you are at the pump, then not only it tells me that use credit card for pumping the gas, but you also use for buying some stuff. So it, it's the credit card information goes to my bank and through bank, I get an alert that can you confirm it? I, it is the same person who you want to use this credit card. So where is the privacy in this? Uh, in fact, my, my daughters, uh, when they use their credit card, the next minute before even they have got the receipt of it, the alert comes to us as a smartphone, so we know where they use, the what purpose they use for. And many of these companies, in fact, one of the interesting application of more recent is smart, when Alexa sees in the refrigerator, in small refrigerator, you can say the moment the milk in your refrigerator goes beyond, below this level, Alexa can place an order to the Walmart to replenish it. So now what happened is some of these manufacturers have RFID tags, so they know what manufacturer uh, refrigerator you are using at home, how efficient it is. They also use your consumption level of each of these items. So look at, I mean, everyone knows what's going on. So as a manufacturer of the refrigerator, I know where my these devices are. 
So think of if I'm using some of these devices or electronic devices at my home or some of these, people would come to know whether I'm a cheap guy or whether I'm, <laughs> I'm a guy who goes for a brand. People would come to know this guy always used the cheap items and this guy is, you know, always used these branded one. Where is my privacy? <laughs> and when do I replenish some of the things on my refrigerator? And Alexa, in fact, there are recently cases. Alexa is a very good tool. In fact, my wife tells me that at home, um, our daughters are out of our home. So most of the time when I'm in office, she's alone at home. She said, my best friend is Alexa. She says, Alexa, plays Hanuman Chalisa. Alexa, do this, tell me this. And Alexa does that. So she said, it's like the best friend I have. But you know, Alexa quietly listens every conversation at home. So some of the cases recently have been where people were discussing, oh, I would kill that guy. And this was just a comment. And Alexa called the cops. Alexa called the police and said that there is some kind of a domestic violence going on here. Where is the privacy? So this is where all these items, when they are continuously working, talking to each other, you are under surveillance and you have no privacy. Thank, so, you. thank you. Thank you, sir. So, so easily you have made us to understand. Thank you, sir. Uh, I would like to take another question from our student. Then. So please. So Rakesh Mitra is asking, can AI have emotions? <laughs> $5 question, um, <laughs> it's a very interesting. So far, people say AI has no emotions. Um, you know, I'm doing a very interesting study and this is a, so I was doing this as my research project and I'm, I'm thinking if it could be patented, which basically means uh, based on how you interact on your computer, I can find out whether you are disgruntled or you are under stress or you may be vulnerable to the organization, which basically means you know the AI is getting into where it is trying to become more and more humanistic. It's trying to learn as we learn or we adapt to the different situations. Great question. Sir, sir as you have heard that this conference is also tele started telecasting YouTube too, apart from Zoom. So we have some question from there also. Uh, we will take very uh, quick reply from you. One question is from Saila Kamath. He is ask, she is asking that uh, whether uh, the artificial intelligence creating new jobs or job employability or it decreasing. Again, a great uh, great questions. Um, I think I would like you to. Um, um, Google another terminology. There is a call robots, which basically means extensive use of AI. And sometimes you cannot pre-program or you cannot pass on intelligence completely. So there is a terminology called cobots. Cobots are where human and robots working together in tandem. So the short answer to the question, AI is AI is killing a lot of jobs, but also creating newer kind of jobs. Now, this is the challenge because if it is more robot based, it's going to take a lot of uh, jobs. But now we are converting those robots to cobots because you need some human interventions to work more effectively. And that's where newer jobs are getting created. Sir, last question is from Chinmay Sharkar. Uh, from YouTube, he is asking whether the corona, the COVID detection and these things is in, in their artificial intelligence use is possible to detect and further treatment or anything, the artificial intelligence use, the COVID and these things can be managed by AI based tools or not? So a great question again. And let's go to the basics of uh, AI which basically means AI-based gadget has to be in the body, on the body, or somewhere around in the system. So let's say I'm giving you practical application at my home. If I'm using my this smartwatch, and smartwatch has some programmatic uh, uh, features, if I cuff, 
if I have a temperature to my body, it can send immediately signals to Alexa, or Alexa can report that, uh, you know, to another system saying, these seems to be a symptoms, are they part of the, you know, the pandemic Corona-19, COVID-19 or not? And then it may ask a question back, report this, report this, report that. So if those tests like your, you have RT-PCR or some test, if those features are built into the tool or app, which I'm running here, pretty much yes. But right now it happened so suddenly that we didn't have, we were not prepared to have these apps. Some people already are getting into these apps where it can help not only to detect whether you have COVID-19 symptoms or not, but you have that in India, what was called uh, Setu, what was called, uh, you know, where you can identify how many people in around area, they are already impacted by COVID. Um, it's Arogya Setu. Arogya Setu. Arogya Setu. So there is a already some kind of intelligence which is coming through these apps to the backend server or at the cloud, which tells which area needs to be more containment or declared as a containment zone. So there are already AI working behind. Uh, it needs to be little configured more the way we would like to analyze. But yes, right now we don't have a ready-made out of the self tools available for it, but people are going to work on those too. And I'm sure soon you would have AI tools. Sir, uh, sir, since we are running out of time, so one more last question from YouTube. Ritam Chatterjee is asking that uh, whether quantum computing has any role in artificial intelligence in security aspects. So first of all, I should tell you that I woke up today 5 o'clock, 5 a.m. And it's going to be 1.45 soon. Um, so for this question, answering additional question, I'll charge hundred dollars. I'm just kidding. Don't. <laughs> okay, sir. Sir, my sir, my ten dollars is pending from last <laughs> conference. I, I'm I, just... I'll share you my uh, Google no. Pay. I'll share you. No, I'll be happy to answer as many questions as long as it permits your time. Uh, this question is: com, uh, Quantum computing is the measurement of where the way computing is done. Computing currently is done based on the bits, where it has only two states, zeros and ones. Then quantum computing, we are talking about qubits, where it means it could have more than two states. It could have as much as eight different state, which basically means the whatever algorithm you built in for computation of that, it will take 1,000 or 10,000 or million times less time, which basically means some of these smartphones soon with the quantum computing would be more powerful than the Cray supercomputer of 1990. Already some of these gadgets are, are much more powerful than the computers I used during my undergrad and master's and PhD program. The power of those computers uh, in my in my smartphone, my smartphone has ten times more power than those system I use for my degrees. So quantum computing is the measurement for fastening the processing side of it. Now that would be the processing power. AI needs now this processing power to create these multiple different uh, options before the decision is made. So AI would be enhanced as far as the quickness or response time is concerned, but it has no direct relevance. So it's like you need a processing power for AI-based application or tools. Uh, of course, this is going to help AI, but AI per se and quantum computing are two different subjects. I'll be happy to take one more last question. So don't uh, take my comment otherwise. So, I'll, so uh, over to Suchita, madam. Over to Suchita, madam. I think so. It's enough. So uh, at least as a midnight time, you have given us given us a very lively session, sir. So uh, you are as enough to take the last question. I, we have got so many questions. So let's see. Uh, someone is asking, Ritik Das, is consciousness computable? 
Say again. Really, it would be the last one. Consciousness. Is consciousness computable? This is this question goes for ten dollar. <laughs> this is a great question, and this is where uh, many of us, many of the researcher worldwide, are thinking. You remember in the beginning, I made uh, a comment, uh, or even the last slide where I quoted one of the researcher, where he said that we have come to a point where machine may take a control over us. And this question goes to that direction, which basically means, what is the consciousness? And that's a big question. Consciousness is, uh, it could be different for different people. And that consciousness, how to create that consciousness in the system. Look at the basic premise of all the artificial AI-based system is, People, these researchers, are the one who are transmitting or thinking how their brain works. And that's what they're trying to build in those algorithms to transfer to this machine. And then there is a capability of a machine to self-learn. Uh, and this is where the real question is. When it self-learns based on the real transaction, it can, off, it can beat the human brain because it may have learned based on situation. Uh, you know, the, the good example is if there is an AI-based surgery, and if the AI tool has performed thousand surgeries, and there were different kinds of complications, it has learned how to the situation and created answers for that or created solution for that. Uh, now, would you call that as part of the consciousness? Is the consciousness is more ethical? Is the consciousness is more empathy? Uh, these are the areas where researchers are thinking whether empathy could be passed on to these gadgets or machines. I don't know. But as I was giving the example, uh, when you are empathy basically could be, and you know, nowadays it happens, if I start someday in the evening, close to Alexa, say I'm tired, it starts saying, hey, you have, you must have a long day. Uh, do this, take some, you know, um, some of this juice or something. Uh, or if I say, oh my God, then it say, what happened? Are you stressed out? Uh, so these are the areas which will evolve. I don't have any um, hard answer whether the consciousness will be built or will not be built. But some of these AI-based tools have a capability to adapt and learn from the transaction or learn from the situation. And there is a little fear that the machine may take over the human brain. Thank you, sir, for your lovely presentation. So I would like to request, sir, for the what is a token of honor to give you the certificate from our uh, international conference. Thank you. Just a minute. Hello, sir. Yeah. Shomar, sir. Sir. Sir, sir on behalf of. Uh, International Conference on Informatics, Artificial Intelligence, and Intelligence System uh, or on behalf of organizing committee member. Sir, please accept this uh, small token of appreciation, sir. My pleasure. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, sir. We have learned so many things. Thank you, sir. My best wishes for the conference, and I'm sure these, um, you know, you will have a great time with so many speakers lined up and so many other experts. With all the best wishes, thank you. And if there is any yes, other, sir, we, have, we have also paper presentation scheduled in Indian time from 2 p.m. We have received many papers, and about 35 papers is to be presented in this conference also. I wish. Uh, 
my right now my body batteries are almost dying down so i wish <laughs> i could be a participant in work, but my best wishes thank you very much thank, thank you sir thank you sir very nice discussion thank you so much sir thank you uh now i sir yeah please ma'am please for the second uh, keynote address keynote lecture i'd like to request dr pk paul so for to call upon professor damodar gupta so again we have another very eminent speaker with us uh, that is uh, from one of the renowned university deemed university in india technology university sir is uh, the vice chancellor of this university so we are fortunate enough that various vice chancellors of the, are associated with this international conference to grace it as much as possible so we are fortunate enough that uh, professor ji damodar sir is with us instead of his busy schedule he has find out a time to give a valuable uh, thought on current issue since our international conference is on informatics artificial intelligence and intelligence system so particularly we have informatics and artificial intelligence informatics is as a broad subject is applicable to many areas so among these education sector is important one the application of it or informatics in education so that's why we are now in a position of digital education so we everyone associated with digital education online education these things there are a lot of opportunities given by this digital education by side by side there are certain challenges and issues also in digital uh, education so sir will talk about us from informatics part of the conference what is digital education what are the opportunities and what are the issues so i would like to request our organizing team uh, to kindly read out a brief bio of professor ji damodar sir please yes sure sir professor damodar gurappu sir is a vice presently is a vice chancellor of chetanna deemed to be university telangana in his 43 years of teaching and research experience he has to his credit 42 books written and 11 edited 71 papers published presented and contributed and 60 journal articles he successfully guided 27 mphil and phd scholars completed three ugc projects gave 26 seminars and led 23 workshops he attended and presented papers at 28 national and 15 international conferences gave 38 invited talks and lectures he visited 21 countries including sweden usa singapore and italy on academic assignments he is a member of 21 academic bodies and was conferred with state best teacher award in 2010 and the present excellence award and the press sorry president excellence award of lions club international he was the president of india's namini for dr harshing gaur central university sagar madhya pradesh during 2005 to 2018 he was dr vinay kumar from pune scholarly paper presenters and uh, enthusiastic participants uh, namaste and warm greetings from chaitanya deemed to be university this is in warangal in telangana state um, let me share my uh, ppt Uh, i was assigned uh, to talk uh, to give my keynote on uh, digital education issues and opportunities in uh, contemporary scenario uh, this is my snapshot of my talk for 30 minutes 
I'll be referring to current scenario and then explain my initial experiments in informatics. And there is an excellent uh, survey conducted by Inadu newspaper on online education. Uh, we'll, I'll be discussing that one and then uh, introduce online courses of uh, university education to all the participants and also some books on digital education. UGC has recommended nine websites. We will be talking about them and uh, there are thousands of tools for digital education but I have selected 19 and then uh, we make a reference to the use of imparters virtual classroom which is being used by IITs and others and if time permits we'll be watching one or two videos also. Um, now here I'll be talking as an academician as an educator but not as a a scientist or an engineer. I have a passion for uh, ICT tools and gather information regarding artificial intelligence, robotics, data science, internet of things, machine learning and translation, digital education, marketing, cloud storage, big data, etc. Uh, we have just listened to Professor Sushil Sharma's keynote and after listening to his keynote, we have uh, come to the conclusion that all these areas are uh, indeed interrelated. For example, when we ask Alexa something, first it does voice synthesis. It recognizes all kinds of voices. And then uh, searches for the things asked in a few seconds, uh, making use of big data, machine learning, artificial intelligence, cloud storage, and the like. So the technological... Uh, <coughs> Uh, era has given several benefits to the world, making our day-to-day -day life uh, easier and more convenient. Technologies such as uh, artificial intelligence, big data, com cloud computing, IoT, robotics, machine learning, and many more abundantly used in various sectors like healthcare, utilizing medical robots, in education, I have an excellent video, I'll show you time permits, and the retail sector, virtual reality and entertainment, in movies, uh, GPRS in navigation, usage of robots in defense, unmanned vehicles. Uh, I have another excellent video to show how uh, cars are manned without drivers. Robotic drones used in agriculture, image processing, biometric system used in other parts, e-commerce based websites using recommendation systems human language processing, speech recognition, real-time traffic prediction, weather forecast, virtual personal assistant, online fraud detection, crime investigation, and the list goes on. Uh, when, I, when it comes to machine learning, I am happy to state that Dr. T. Anvish and Dr. G. Santosh Reddy of EC Department of my university obtained an Indian patent on a novel automatic sleep staging features analysis using machine learning. He, uh, so this 13th patent so far my stock has uh, to its credit was awarded uh, on June 25th. Um, so now in the present uh, pandemic has uh, affected and uh, disrupted all aspects of life, modes, materials, teaching and learning globally. So the traditional teaching learning methodology and the student-teacher interactive experience has been replaced with online education. Though not a permanent replacement for the traditional classroom teaching, blended teaching and learning has become a new norm due to corona. Uh, these, uh, there seems no foreseeable med medical solution to the current uh, pandemic situation in near future. We are now worried about the third wave. Delta cases have uh, recently surfaced. On Sunday, on June uh, 27, ICMR announced that the third wave may not be severe. So, however, the higher education institutes are left with no other option but to no other option but to shift to digital education for some more time. So, this seems safer and minimizes health risk of the staff and students through online institution has got its own uh, limitations. Uh, if we look at the teaching and learning scenario during uh, pre-COVID and post-COVID times, uh, we find a sea change. 
online classes, web conferences on different platforms, use of Google Forms and attending more online classes have become a new normal. Our students have open access to Swayam online courses, National Digital Library and uh, AICT free courses. National Digital Library designed by IIT Kharagpur provides a staggering of one crore books in 70 languages uh, from uh, useful uh, KG to PG and PhD level. So the end result of all these modern courses and techniques now is to make learners autonomous and explore new vistas on their own. Um, now, some other educational websites are Elysian, uh, Coursera, the University of Reddit, Udacity, MIT Open Courseway, Open Culture, Khan Academy, Juniors, uh, Tufts Open Courseway, Video Lessons, Net, TED, Shodor, Udemy19, edX.org, iTunes U, Liberty Classroom, Cross Space, Code Academy, Citable, Open Learn, Free Computer Books, and uh, Academic App. Um, in addition to these educational websites, uh, some more uh, information can be collected from uh, relevant blogs, vlogs, free books, newsletters. YouTube videos, podcasts, and online courses that can be used as uh, tools in uh, digital education. Uh, two decades ago, uh, technology was not optimal for online education. When I bought my first uh, PC in 1995, it cost me fortune. I devised uh, this computer-assisted language learning package called uh, Damo Call in English. Um, perhaps uh, the first package in the then Pascal language. That package helped me to be the visiting scholar at Language Learning Research Center, Stockholm University, Sweden. Uh, let me give you some details about this. So the call packages uh, that were available uh, uh, during uh, um, 1990s were primarily aimed at uh, native learners of English. Uh, some of the items needed for second and foreign language learners, such as Indian collocations, language functions, misspelled words, uh, typical errors, vocabulary misused by EFL learners, were given less importance in both modules. Uh, some of the programs of all software, such as Adventures in Speaking English, Gap Master, Text Master, Exam Focus, Grammar Focus Advanced, Match Master, Pinpoint, Topic Focus, and Word Store um, were indeed versatile, though not curriculum oriented, not, not non native uh, user friendly. They were primarily based on the native curricula and print media. But my uh, call uh, software uh, with a floppy and the CD and study material was designed to work on any computer in 19. 90s. They facilitated uh, not only online teaching using computers on local area network and wide area network, but also enabled evaluation of the performance online. Uh, the floppy package was, was available uh, for Indian environment in tune with the systems available, including the old PC. Uh, 286 or 386 machines in 1990s. The floppy package was easily installed and ran on any PC ranging from XT to Pentium with the DOS or Windows operating the system. So the floppy was menu driven as opposed to a character interface of 80s which displays only options. It was very user friendly. So my interest in uh, call uh, packages um, it led me to publishing uh, a textbook uh, titled English per email and offering an exclusive paper on call packages at Shatwana University. Uh, I shared uh, the syllabus with academicians interested in call packages. They can write to me. So when I devised, uh, uh, this was the book, uh, which was published in uh, 2002. And uh, it's in uh, uh, 215 pages, and it prescribed. It's the it was the prescribed textbook for MCA students of Tartan University in uh, 2001. 
So it covers advantages of internet, parts and components of email, sample emails, nature of online language, precise messages, samples of letter style, tips on good writing, important internet terms, 3000 email symbols, letters such as ASAP that we use for as soon as possible before PFA, please find attached, etc. for words, phrases, and the complete utterance with shortened words, single word, substitutes, American English proposal for Euro English. These are the contents of the book. Now, coming to my radio lesson, when I devised my radio lessons in 2002, uh, they reached lakhs of listeners in Telangana. Now they are available in MP4 format. Uh, with me. I have anchored 108 radio lessons covering all important aspects of English usage. You name the topic, I have a lesson on it. Uh, some of them are uh, English and information technology, resume writing, interviews, words of unconfused, idiomatic expressions, uh, appropriateness in English, American English, that explains the differences between British English and American English, improving one's vocabulary, English in Italy, how it is taught in Italy. Bridge courses, standard English, English soft skills, similes for comparison, business English, boosters, methods of teaching English, English as a second language, English as a foreign language, language for literature, internet for ELD, online teaching English, foreign expressions, collocations. So these are the, some of the radio lessons that are available with me uh, for uh, now, I brought out a book also uh, covered in 2004, uh, covering uh, 10 transcripts of my radio lessons on English with an audio series. Now, I have plans to convert other lessons uh, like this. Let, let us watch this video just for a few seconds for a minute. It's in uh, bilingual and uh, most of us misuse articles. Uh, we use uh, such incorrect sentences uh, without articles, but all these uh, countable nouns uh, compulsory usage of articles. And many people say he's a MLA, but uh, MLA begins with a vowel sound. So we say he's an MLA. Like this, you know, this runs for uh, seven minutes and we don't have uh, time to watch the entire thing. Now I go back to my can somebody yeah thank you for highlighting but uh, okay you can have this if you write to me I'll be giving you and then uh, now uh, uh, there are some other uh, books which will be useful to all the participants and teachers. So this teacher's manual which I brought out in 2005 in one nine. 165 pages with a CD supplied to the teachers after the orientation program in different places. So it will be useful to some participants of this conference who want to devise the latest teaching materials in English. Um, uh, these textbooks co-edited by me were prescribed in all universities in AP during 2004-2007 with series. Um, in 2003, we experimented with material of listening and speaking to be used uh, in language labs at UG level. We allocated 25 marks to this component in the year-end examination. So this textbook was prescribed in all uh, nine universities the United AP uh, during uh, 2003 and uh, six. Uh, now I'm bringing out uh, three textbooks by Cambridge University Press. Uh, they are titled English for Communication 1, 2, and 3. So now, all, as teachers of digital education, our roles uh, are changing. Now we cannot be dictators. We cannot just dictate notes. But we have to be managers of learning. 
we have to play the different roles as mentor, guide, motivator, facilitator, multitasker, and so on. Look at this picture. So this teacher is using a smartphone, laptop, and iPad. So you have to use of learning and teaching that are available. So now we have to become e-teachers. Uh, some say that uh, technology cannot be a life teacher. That's true. So no technology, of course, is a life teacher with his pleasing personality. But the teacher has to mend his ways of imparting instruction. He cannot follow non-stop monologue method of lecturing. He should be a, an e-teacher uh, to bring in latest technologies uh, to his uh, classroom. So technology won't replace teachers, but the teachers who use technology will probably replace teachers who don't use it. Um, so we have to be bloggers, e-content developers, and now which makes it a mandate now. And uh, even we can be uh, uh, civil world by producing several videos. I tried a short videos titled Lock and Learn English and posted 20 of them on YouTube. You type my name, Guru Damodar, and you will have access to them. Uh, they are like this, you know. Uh, very short uh, videos. These are just... Uh, first, you will be reading a joke. Do you own a car? Yes, no. What do you mean? When my daughter takes it to college, it's us. When my son takes it to this, it's his. When my wife takes it to a beauty parlor, it's her. And when I take it to a petrol pump, it's mine. So this is the joke. And in the next slide, you know, now you can laugh and learn, learn um, some usage of uh, English. So reply can be yes or no. No yes if it is partly correct. If the response is partly positive and partly negative, it is yes no. We can say her car or hers, or my car or mine. Petrol becomes gas or gasoline in American English. Parlor becomes parlor in American English. In American English, we send it without uh, you. Parlor label like this. So like this, you know, I have uh, posted uh, 30 um, short videos covering uh, <coughs> uh, such uh, English speech. Uh, if you visit YouTube, you can uh, have access to this. Um, now coming to... Uh, the internet uh, usage, you know, now uh, during pandemic, 48% uh, people have depended on social media. So now that has become in thing and uh, this is what happens every minute of the day. So many things happen and uh, it is becoming very powerful. Now coming to these, uh, I don't know, the book. Um, Now, let me make a brief reference to the important books that uh, resist powers in uh, the digital education can make use of them. Uh, these books, you know, uh, this first one, Integrating Educational Technology into Teaching, uh, Transferring Learning Across uh, Disciplines. You know, this popular book links uh, uh, technology integration strategies to specific learning theories. It shows uh, pre- and in-service teachers how to plan for technology integration and offers opportunities to practice integrating technology by designing curriculum to meet teaching and learning needs. And uh, uh, this book, another important book, The Educator's uh, Guide to Producing New Media and Open Educational Resources. And uh, this book, you know, provides a practical advice on how to produce and use open uh, access resources to uh, support student learning. And uh, another uh, latest book, this digital leadership, uh, changing paradigms uh, for changing times uh, by Eric uh, Schindler. Um, so this revamped uh, edition also features new structure and organization emphasizing the interconnectivity of the pillars of digital leadership to drive sustainable change innovative strategies and leadership practices that enhance school culture and drive learning environment, new online resources, informative graphics, and end of chapter guiding questions. And uh, this uh, website, Bodhi Tree, combines the power of MOOCs with uh, learning management system. 
Uh, teachers can assemble multimedia books made of chapters, which in turn are uh, composed of uh, sections which include interactive videos and um, auto-graded practice problems, auto-graded assisted lab exercises, reference material slides, etc. Et so this uh, Bodhi tree uh, has the purposes. So uh, now we don't have time to uh, watch the entire movie. Uh, so now these are some of the important uh, tools that uh, teachers and participants can think of. Um, Animato is uh, very convenient for video making. Camtasia for video effects. Doodly for video creating with animation. Uh, Ed Puzzle, uh, with Ed Puzzle we can create video lessons. The uh, Headshelf is very useful for educational tools. EdTed for teacher ideas, image for online content creation and presentation, and uh, Clip the Learning for teaching materials in advance. And Zing uh, for the frame casting, now of course it will be replaced by so, to create animations, papers, the free powered activities, a Prezi for creating presentations, Uristar, a tool for teachers, screen cast for match, uh, for the screen recording with the text person's screen. Um, separate team uh, uh, is very useful to ask several questions, headed for the ideas of teachers around the world, video script for animated videos, which is spaces for uh, special writing uh, platforms. Now, uh, these days, you know, all of us uh, have a synchronous communication. Now, uh, you are uh, you, through WhatsApp, through Chatbox, and now with the help of Screenomatic, Google Yo, Google Meet, GeoMeet, Zoom, WebEx, we can communicate with any student in any country synchronously. Um, now, there is an excellent uh, survey conducted uh, uh, by Inadu, a popular uh, Telugu newspaper in AP on online instruction. Now look at this uh, cartoon, you know, we are groping in uh, darkness. Uh, so the non-technology teacher finds it difficult to guide the 21st uh, century students to meet the future challenges. Professor Sharma was making a reference. If teachers are not technocrats, they lose their jobs also. If you say, no, I cannot handle iPad or I cannot handle a digital board, I cannot use this latest technology, means you will be outdated. So you have to update your skills. Now this um, uh, survey says that, you know, uh, this was conducted uh, during uh, June 20 to 27 for one week, you know, um, in collaboration with Telangana State United Teachers uh, Federation. And the survey results were published on July 4. The survey covered 1,868 villages, 489 mandals, almost 40,000 schools. They covered the 30,500 government schools and 10,000 private schools in 33 districts. So it interviewed 22,500 families and 1,729 teachers. This is indeed the large and authentic survey. And this survey revealed the interesting facts. It uh, shattered my, some of my myths of online classes. We uh, we say that everybody has a cell phone, particularly affordable geo smartphone with unlimited internet connection. But look at these surprising uh, facts and figures. Out of 22,500 families covered, the survey uh, say revealed that only 8,900 families uh, have smartphones. All the families, only 2,990 families, that means 22% of families can spare a phone for online learning. So when your children attend online classes, you cannot use the phone. In the same newspaper, I read a report of an unfortunate case. Uh, see, this is... Uh, um, the 16-year-old girl committed suicide for not providing uh, uh, a, a smartphone by her uh, single uh, uh, labor mother. So this is an unfortunate thing. So now uh, several uh, schools, you know, out of 9,200 um, uh, schools, only 1,335 private schools are conducting online class. Don't think that all private schools are also conducting online classes. No. 
Out of 10,000, only 1,330 When parents were interviewed regarding their opinion on online classes, two, 232 parents, only 6% uh, parents you know, found the, these online classes useful. 1,289 parents found them partly useful. And 3,700 parents are not in favor of online classes. Only 1,485 parents uh, uh, so grant uh, welcome online instruction. So these are the results of the survey. And look at uh, these figures. You know, the child uh, wants to play, and the mother is doing uh, <laughs> the child's homework. Um, so now, as teachers, you know, we have to. Uh, fight with the fatigue, boredom. The present pandemic crisis forced us to upgrade our skills of higher technology designed for distance and group learning using different platforms. So now we have to think of various ways of fighting with uh, this boredom in the classroom learning now. So some of the latest teaching materials for e-teaching learning in our higher education institutions will uh, come to our help. See, uh, um, look at uh, this uh, teacher is using um, a simple uh, technique, an innovative technique uh, to uh, use this MAL. MAL is used to, for mobile assisted language learning. Now, if you have a smartphone with that, uh, you can just uh, switch on your Wi-Fi, connect to Zoom, keep it on the mirror, and then go on writing. So it uh, uh, telecasts whatever you write to. And uh, in some government schools, you know, you don't find all the facilities. And uh, look at this teacher. He is using a hanger, you know, uh, to hold uh, that smartphone. So these are some of the innovative methods. Even if you don't have all uh, these facilities, you have to manage with them. And these uh, importers virtual classrooms um, have brought uh, Flexi Eye Capture, which makes LCS affordable and easy to purchase with flexible payment terms. So higher education institutions can benefit from uh, this Impartus virtual classroom and classroom uh, lecture capture in uh, these uh, challenging times. Uh, Bits uh, Pilani, IAM Mumbai, IH Delhi, Centurion uh, Pace have moved away from the likes of uh, Zoom, WebEx, MS Teams. But we are using only Zoom, WebEx, but they have moved away from these things. Live VEC platforms or importers they are using now. MEPCO, G. Narayanamma, Shivanadar University, Medi, etc., have taken to a blended approach combining both the LCA, S, and VS. So, uh, 15,000 users said BICS have been using importers VC across their four campuses for virtual teaching and learning and have found importers platform. Capability is quite comprehensive and highly scalable. Uh, Shivanadar University of Nodia ha uh, has uh, installed Impartus LCS in 25 classrooms for simultaneous uh, live uh, streaming and recording of classroom sessions to ensure continued teaching and learning. This has enabled their teachers to teach from the physical classrooms and students to access live from whatever they are. So this keeps their classrooms continuously relevant, is highly scalable, and allow teachers uh, the comforts of a classroom. IIT Delhi has awarded importers a deal for five classrooms, CLCS learning uh, classroom system, and uh, 10,000 users we see live platforms for both live classes and non-demand playback. So this integrates both classroom and virtual teaching learning in a single solution. So MEPCO has powered 49 of it, 47 of its uh, classroom uh, with importers, LCS, and VEC, and is currently conducting live sessions through their physical classrooms. Since importers blends both physical and virtual like no one else does, teaching Hello. and learning has gone uh, unimpeded at uh, MEPCO. Uh, so, Please mute yourself. 
So the, the teachers of Narayanam Institute of Technology will capture their classroom teaching and make uh, the content available to their students anywhere, anytime. Uh, so this is my popular uh, uh, app. I make mm -hmm. use of this, mm -hmm. and all nice. of you can also download this app, the free dictionary of Parlex. Oh, this classic free version, you know, downloaded <laughs> a million times. It has multiple dictionaries, encyclopedias, and tejoras in one place. Uh, it has access to many languages, and online translations of English into more than 40 languages. Plus, dozens of other translation apps are available. and do waiting is given to it uh, in uh, academic performance index when you Professor, you have to improve your academic performance. Now, uh, credits are allotted to e content development. Most of the teachers keep the API section empty because of the lack of uh, proper training and the resources in e content development. So, please attend as many as uh, FDPs. Uh, these conferences, workshops on e-content development, learn the techniques and uh, develop. So in this lockdown period, some of you can give importance to this. Uh, please remember, you, we are talking about a younger generation, generation Y, and their uh, interpersonal communication skills are different from generation X, and they are different from us. The younger, the younger uh, generation is more comfortable saying something through a digital uh, mechanism than even face to face. So now there is a need to come up with better tools of uh, digital education to motivate our new generation students as this uh, conference expects from all of us. Uh, thank you. That's my presentation and the keynote address. Now it's open to your feedback and uh, questions. Thank you, sir. Uh, I, I, I don't think I have exceeded my time. I think uh, 30 minutes were given to me. Have I taken uh, more than 30 minutes? No, no, no. It's all right. Absolutely, absolutely fine, sir. Absolutely fine. And this is a, uh, it's a really uh, very much informative uh, session. Uh, related to your uh, digital education opportunities and issues in contemporary scenarios, and and, and the particular the uh, our uh, all the audience have highly benefited with the blended learning uh, methods, the virtual teaching training, the e contents and e tools for teaching, yes. uh, particularly especially your edited books. Uh, uh, so nice of you, the uh, your share your uh, this edited book. And, uh, and particularly the open source uh, apps what you have developed. So uh, all of you are uh, and, uh, highly benefited with this uh, blended learning teaching methodology uh, with the sharing of e-content and e-tools for teaching. Uh, thank you, sir, uh, for your uh, nice presentation. And uh, uh, yes, uh, uh, just may I now uh, request our organizing secretary, Susita Madam, on behalf of uh, International Conference on Informatics, Artificial Intelligence, and Intelligence System. Uh, we humbly want to offer a small token of appreciation to Honorable Samodha uh, uh, Guru Pasa, the Vice Chancellor, Saitana Team to University, Warang Telangana. Yes, sure, sir. Sure, sir. Uh, sir. Please accept it on behalf of organizing committee. I do accept. Thank you very much.
Thank you so much. Thank you so much Thank for you. your gracious, for your gracious parents. Thank you. 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 Sir, I, I have a very few. I have a very one question to you, uh, Chaitanya uh, Dam Damodar sir. Sir, what are what is your opinion regarding the issues in digital education in colleges compared to universities? If we ask, if you say about the online direct live streaming classes. What is your opinion in general colleges and compared to universities? In universities, uh, UGC has recommended nine websites and uh, Swayam, MOOCs, and uh, even Flipinet, National Digital, Swayam Prabha, YouTube, and uh, this uh, NDL, National Digital Library. And uh, these uh, nine uh, websites recommended by UGC are very useful uh, at university level. And uh, these days, you know, some autonomous colleges also have research programs and they require Shod Ganga, Vidwan in Fubinet also. And these are the excellent uh, tools of digital education available at the university level. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir, for your valuable contribution and grace and offering us a lot of knowledge in education technology, digital education, online education different platforms. I hope that all types of academicians, student, researcher, faculty, and academic administrator learn many things, and it will help all of us very well in future. So over to Suchita, madam. Thank you, Sir Damodar and sir. Now, I would like to request Dr. P.K. Paul, sir, for inviting Sri Gravin Kumar. OK, so now. Now we are uh, in third lecture session, and it is a keynote lecture, and it is to be given by Gobind Kumar Sir, Sri Gobind Kumar, who is the founder, president, and CEO of this Edu India Innovative Intelligence. Without his support, conducting this conference was impossible. So I, on behalf of Iconisis International Conference, Welcome you, sir, on behalf of the organizing committee. I now request them to kindly read out the profile of our eminent speaker, uh, Govind Kumar, sir. See, he is from industry, and this conference is having multiple combination of academic and also industry combination. So we, have, we are fortunate enough uh, for his uh, lecture. So now I would like to request uh, Sujita, madam, to kindly read out the profile of Govind Kumar, sir. Dr. Tapun Sarkar will read out his profile. Okay, okay. Dr. Okay, madam, okay, madam. Uh, thank yes, you, sir. Dr. Yes, sir, thank you, sir. Mr. Govind Kumar is a founder and president of A to NDI, Singapore, and India. He completed his education in engineering degree from Anna University, Chennai, and also full-time MBA. His specialization is marketing and systems. He is a certified Six Sigma Master Black Belt and certified project management professional. In professional life, he is an innovator, technologist, and author. Comes with over a two decade of experience in MNCs and startup in the area of technology, operation, and quality. Mr. Gobind successfully incubated and grew center of excellence for service analysis and for prevention in high oil packet during 2012 to 2017. He has led a transformation initiative that had a financial impact of more than 100 million marking dollars. He is currently the founder and CEO of Seaport AI and AI company based on based out of India and Singapore. He has helped Seaport AI to launch solution in the area of customer experience, industry 4.0, healthcare, and risk. He is also an author of the book Changing Profession and Customers. He has owned numerous national and global accolades in the area of customer experience innovation, leadership, excellence, and quality. So thank you, sir. So please. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you, uh, Dr. Sarkar, you know, for, um, for the introduction. 
uh, Dr. Paul um, and Dr. Soumya Paul, you know, and the rest of the organizing committee. Uh, my dear uh, distinguished uh, panelists um, and uh, presenters, you know, paper presenters. I'm sure, you know, you're going to be sharing uh, with all, uh, <clears throat> with, the, with the team, you know, uh, on informatics, artificial intelligence and uh, information systems, right? Um, we welcome them also. Uh, and um, I also want to thank, you know, uh, the students who have joined here, uh, who joined this conference. So the topic I'm going to be uh, sharing, you know, is an interesting one. Uh, but before that, let me just, uh, you know, as far as my introduction, uh, I wear two hats, right? Uh, let me minimize this. Okay. So I wear two hats. One is the Seaport AI and the Edu NDI. Uh, Seaport AI is a development company, whereas Edu NDI is focused more on the training piece. Okay. So that's where the two distinction is. Okay. And uh, as Dr. Paul said, you know, I'm here to share uh, some perspectives on how the industry is headed. Okay. Uh, the industry uh, perspective. Yeah, if you can go on mute. Uh, one thing I want to share is, you know, I want to introduce, uh, I want to, uh, uh, you know, introduce the AI itself, right? Because I'm sure it can be a very diverse audience. There are experienced educators, uh, professionals, <laughs> students, everyone is there because there is a lot of confusion around what is AI, okay? So I will put that in perspective and image processing is a upcoming area, okay? Because just like we analyze numbers, we are analyzing images. Uh, this is a very interesting field, so I'll share some perspectives also. So if you have any questions, feel free to stop me. Uh, Seaport AI, you know, uh, we are a technology company. Uh, we uh, deal with three verticals. Uh, data, you know, of course, is the center of it. Uh, automation, intelligent automation, and augmented reality. Okay. And we are a top 20 AI startup uh, for uh, 2019. This award is given by the CIO Review Magazine. Okay. And uh, being in uh, the development, it helps us to understand where the industry is. And we bring the best of uh, the requirements right from the oven, you know, to the uh, training division. Okay. So I want to start with what is AI. Okay. People think a lot about AI. At its core, AI is a computer software that thinks and acts like human beings. Okay. Thinking and acting like human beings is very, very important. You know, it's a rapidly growing field. What are all the application areas? Today, it is used to predict heart diseases. It is already being used. Okay. Fraud detection, it is already used. What is this recommendation system? You watch a movie or listen to a song in YouTube or your favorite app. After a while, the app is suggesting, listen to this also. You may like this. So what is the system doing? System is actually recommending things to you. It is also AI. Face detection. I don't know whether you do face detection for attendance management, right? In the good old days, it used to be name calling. Then access cards came. Then you have fingerprint reader. Now we have face detection. I'm sure some of you would have experienced this already. Okay. So the key point I'm trying to make is whether someone likes it or not, one is going to be either technologist behind AI or an end user of AI. That is why in the introduction I said, AI is similar to what India experienced, India and the rest of the world experienced in the 80s. It is like computerization. Okay. It will settle down. There is a lot of expectations, some wrong expectations, wrong understanding, okay, over expectations. All these things will settle down very shortly. We are in the very, very early stage. It is like child is in second or third standard. Okay. Child has to come to 12th standard uh, and do many, many things. We are far, far away from that. Okay. Having understood 
what is the movie that comes to your mind when i say ai it can be any one of these movies right it can be you know sharuk khan's rawan you know this is rajini khan's uh, robo movie okay and you have these are english movies right there is a steven spielberg film on artificial intelligence itself these are some of the movies that come to our mind when someone says artificial intelligence and some of these movies are driving a lot of wrong expectations because the kind of things that you see in movies technology has not developed we are only thinking right like putting chip you know in your brain those are all ideas only you are not there yet maybe it will take 20 years maybe it will take 50 years 100 years nobody knows right and that is the reality of the industry so what you see in movies is actually called as strong ai okay we are not there yet please understand we are not there yet okay so this is also called as artificial general intelligence and artificial super intelligence i'm again repeating as students practitioners and teachers of ai please get this right what you see in movies okay we are not there yet we don't know when we are going to achieve that okay it is a work of fiction so what is the dominant then what is ai that is there today it is actually called as weak ai where we are solving problems by detecting patterns right you see here every year sales is increasing so i can say that sales will increase next year also right you can say what is the big deal well if you have just 20 data points you can say but when you have 2 lakh data points 20 crore data points you need to let algorithm detect the patterns and predict the future this is the dominant mode of ai today and even with this we are solving many many problems right we are detecting heart diseases in fact lot of work there was lot of questions on covid okay lot of work has happened you know in the area of covid detection okay in vaccine development lot of artificial intelligence uh, has happened okay so please this is a very very important understanding i want all of you to have what you see in movies we are not there what is currently is vk but don't think vk is really weak it is only for comparison sake okay even with this vk ai we are solving many many problems right okay with that understanding uh can anyone tell who is this gentleman on your screen can you please uh, put it in the chat window who is this gentleman and why i am showing this person on your screen can any of you take a shot you can come to chat and uh, tell you can type the response actually i have a problem when i have to talk okay when others don't talk <laughs> i always believe in interactive stuff that is why i brought this any of you want to try it no one yeah someone has mentioned tech god okay <laughs> okay yes tech god it is indeed john mccarthy john mccarthy he coined the term ai in 1957 you can call him as nearly the father in our you know one of the proponents of ai okay okay and if you look at the history of artificial intelligence um someone mentioned about turing test okay 
that is from 1950s so one question i want to ask you is anyone can answer so this technology is around from 1950 onwards what is it that has happened in the recent past that everyone is talking of ai you can come to chat and type please understand i am asking a question if you see the timeline it is there from 1950 so the technology is not new right so why is it that everyone is talking of ai now no not quantum computing advancement you can say that to an extent yes you can say that <laughs> tech god is answering any other any other thought see what i am telling is very basic okay you must all know this in fact my original idea was you know uh, human robot no no availability of internet yeah true what else but something bigger than that Ad yeah good uh, good uh, response abhishek advancement of computation and lots of data so how much price you paid for buying a gaming laptop lot of money right today gaming laptop is available for 60000 i know 60000 is lot of money but it is not 6 lakhs or 6 crores right so people can buy it right minimum 50k and there is lot of data availability information is there so it is those things and of course internet okay internet has become very cheap and very fast also all this has led to the growth of artificial intelligence and all of that has happened in the last 10 years that is why though this technology is as old as 1950 everyone is talking about ai in the last 10 years especially last 5 years okay so please keep this in mind we are in the realm of ai and this is not a new technology lot of parallel technologies have helped the growth of ai right improvement in quantum you know computation right that is your hardware capability that is not ai data availability that is not ai internet that is not ai they are all parallel technologies that have helped the growth of ai okay so please keep this in mind okay and what you see in your screen right this is uh, anybody any guesses as to who is this gentleman and what is happening here in fact i have given a clue here first computer to beat world chess champion what is this person's name you can come into chat and why this is an important event yeah dr vinay kumar right gary kaspro okay until then nobody thought a machine can actually beat a human being so it was a landmark event when gary kaspro was beaten by ibm's computer right nobody thought you know a system can beat a human being right in chess right because chess is something you require a lot of practice how long does it take for someone to become a grandmaster any guesses how long does it take for someone to become a yes d blue versus gary kaspro that's correct how long does it take for someone to become a grandmaster is not an ai question <laughs> 15 years 10 years okay what else twenty five years it's actually somewhere in between okay somewhere around 15 years so somebody toils you know for 15 years they live breathe chess and a system is able to beat it right 
So all that uh, the system did was pattern recognition. Very, very high level of pattern recognition was built into that system, of course, with very high processing power. That was not widely available at that time. Okay, it's a specially created system. Right? So please keep this also in your mind. So those are some of the core things that I wanted to share with all of you, right? Because there is a lot of misconceptions about AI. Okay. So one question that can get asked is, is AI going to replace human beings? I think someone asked. The current form of AI is not going to replace human beings. Please get this right. Okay. Unless AI grows to a level where it can perform at the level of human beings, at least at 60-70% level, until we reach that level, AI is not going to replace. In fact, the same question was asked in the 80s. Computer is going to replace human beings and I don't know, you go and look at some of the old photos. People actually burnt computers. They thought, you know, computers are going to steal jobs. Right? Yes, artificial general intelligence. Yes. So people, people thought computers are going to steal jobs. Did computers steal jobs? Yeah, some jobs, you know, you don't require people, but new jobs get, new jobs get generated. That is the thing with change, right? Because once upon a time, we had bullock cart. After bullock cart, motorbikes came. So someone was riding bullock cart, lost his job, right? So change is permanent in life. So AI is creating new types of jobs. Okay. New types of jobs are created every day. I think uh, one, if you are a student, you know, you can make use of this, right? To grow your career. If you are an academician, you know, you can invent and you can create the future technologies, right? So please get this clearly in your mind, okay? Because I, wherever I go, that is one question I am asked. Is AI going to replace tech? It is not going to. From the industrial, all technology, yeah, exactly, right? Uh, Swarnendu is, uh, you know, correctly telling. All technology changes have this fear, right? Everybody is fearful, right? Human beings are going to be in control, right? At least our grandchildren, everything is protected, okay? So don't worry about what is going to happen to our great-grandchildren. Nobody can predict that. Right? So that is on core AI, right? I want all of you to get that right. Because even with uh, uh, industry professionals, this doubt is there. Okay? Now coming to image analytics, because whenever we talk of AI, machine learning and all that, we typically say, you know, analyzing data. Right? Now we are analyzing images. I can ask everyone to switch on your camera and tell who is happy with my lecture or not? Technology has progressed. You can do that to your students also, right? Which student is actually happy with what you are teaching? <laughs> Today it has gone to that level. Okay. And we are analyzing even videos. Right? You are doing invigilation of exams. No, no need for invigilation. You have a CCTV camera and monitor it, right? If someone is behaving differently, you can have AI system send messages. It's already happening, right? Surveillance, what I explained in invigilation is used in surveillance. Okay. In predicting fraud, right? So all these things are Technology changes, technology advancements. And as I said, some jobs are going to become redundant. But new jobs are going to come. That is part of any change, right? Always remember the bullock cart versus motorbike example. When we transition from bullock cart to motorbike, person who was driving bullock cart lost his job, right? So we are in the midst of change and we are analyzing. 
and what is driving this is what is known as the smartphone revolution right look at the number of photos that are being taken if you have to uh, meet a doctor today you know we are meeting doctors virtually the doctor is saying you send your report you know he asks us to take some blood test you send the report by whatsapp people say that you send your ecg report also through whatsapp today it's happening so that's an image right those images can be processed today people are taking so many photos this is a huge opportunity in making changes to the way we process all of this has been accelerated by covid okay i'm sure after covid you know this number will be much much higher okay that is the way you know images are there is a quantum increase in the number of images right which is why the whole image analytics is a big big field lot of research is going on right as i said this is still vki even with this vki as i said we are solving problems we are predicting diseases like cancer okay healthcare ai is one area uh, are there any doctors in this uh, medical doctors in this forum i don't think so right so healthcare ai is a big opportunity and just like many other fields doctors are resisting ai in a big way because it is going to impact their operations right today a system can tell with 99% accuracy based on a scan report whether someone is going to develop cancer or not right so then you can ask what is the role of a doctor the doctor is still going to be there it is like a radiologist right but the sphere is there okay and even image analytics has been around for a long time okay from 1960s it has progressively moved you know on to 2000s right this field of image analytics is comes under what is known as deep learning it is the most advanced form of ai today ai you know there is something called machine learning and there's something called deep learning deep learning is a more advanced form of machine learning where you deal with images and videos primarily if you just have data you use machine learning okay so please understand that terminology also correct right so image recognition you know or a computer vision okay searching the ways to automate all the job that a human visual can do it is the same thing that is behind driverless cars image detection right lot of technology advancements are taking place this is happening okay what i am talking is happening today people are using these technologies people are looking at advances for these technologies and that's how you know the industry is progressing there is one question yeah tesla self driving cars yes it is based on image recognition so there uh, again one other question will self driving cars come to india <laughs> do you think it is possible i don't think so even 100 years i don't think self driving cars are a possibility in india because you know people need to follow rules right there needs to be some level of standardization that is not going to happen in a country like india road condition you know if you have i mean we don't have such big roads right someone is telling you know road conditions if you have a separate lane again those are all in the realm of theory right in fact there are a lot of ethical questions also around driverless car because driverless car recently caused an accident and killed someone so whom will you go and file a case against who will you go and file a case against is it the person who owns this car right is it tesla there is no driver no 
there is no driver who will you go and file again so all these things are fundamental questions around ai right if an ai makes mistake please understand we are still talking of probability here system can't be 100% accurate some people are called that phone can fit in your hand or eyes yeah see again that is what is known as form factor the form factor is decreasing right you had big screen then the laptop came smaller screen then mobile phone has been reducing in size right so that is a hardware that is an advancement in hardware that is not ai please understand if you are talking about a phone that can fit in your hand right if you are telling it can be fitted inside your hand no technology has not developed technology has not developed maybe someone is doing a research right nothing prevents people from doing a research you know someone can say that i will put a chip you know inside my brain and do a research yeah go ahead and do a research no one stops you right maybe it will take 50 years for people to for the technology to become widespread because the most important thing is i can talk a lot you know in a research setting but when it comes to applying at scale okay we use the word scale you know in industry can it be used by everyone right can it be used in uh, yes you don't have a chip in your brain no i mean that's why i said you can do research but technology has not developed to that extent right i'm sure a day will come when that can happen that is why i said what you see in movies you are not there yet okay so so far what i shared you know from my uh, <clears throat> so what are the applications of uh, this image analytics right i we already talked about uh, you know healthcare diagnostics right attendance management surveillance fraud detection it is being used in a big way insurance fraud detection you know you go you know you have a car okay small scratch is there people log a claim saying you know a big vehicle dashed into my car okay it is a false claim today people you know you don't have to wait for inspection agent to come if you send the images the image you know the ai system can tell what is the likelihood of a fraud uh, fraudulent claim it is already happening in retail you know intelligent information about shop of behavior right if you go to a supermarket which place more people are going to which item people are you know selecting fast which item people are taking time to select all those things are happening you know through image analytics if you are standing in a queue right i can identify people you know whether this person is a frequent flyer or not and offer differentiated service extraction of information from documents right you collect uh, uh, mark sheets right you collect mark sheets when somebody joins your college okay then somebody enters you know all the details if i scan the ai system can actually pick up information from mark sheet and update automatically in the computer system or database this is also something that is happening okay there are a couple of questions that are coming as we know about that we provide a equation to a classical computer and a quantum computer Yeah, there are a couple of questions how can we develop a perfect mechanism to protect protect the uh, cyber crime see one thing i want to do because i work a lot you know in the area of fraud detection fraudsters are very smart people people who commit fraud 
and actually very intelligent people. In fact, what we have seen is they are always one step ahead of you know uh, people who are trying to catch okay or prevent fraud. So there is never a perfect mechanism. Even with AI, we are able to only prevent fraud only to a limited extent. Okay, we are still far far away from a perfect system. I will say. we have through ai systems we have been able to prevent fraud by nearly about one third that is 35% or so not more than that because we are still far far away okay so uh, so far what i shared uh, is in the realm of you know seaport ai what are the work that we do i want to quickly you know take a few minutes to cover what we do in edu and ai uh we offer a lot of uh, training programs you know especially in the area of artificial intelligence six sigma and innovation and a few other things uh we offer you know courses to take people from basic to advanced to uh, expert level as i mentioned uh we start with python programming and ai concepts we also spend time on logical reasoning right so that this builds uh, the uh, foundation then we come to you know machine learning right and another important aspect that i want to highlight is uh, another important thing uh, that i want to highlight is you require a good mathematics and statistics background for successful ai career please don't make no mistake about it okay make no mistake about it you need solid math skills if you don't have solid mathematics skills it is going to be difficult to achieve a certain level of proficiency in ai so mathematics and statistics are really the foundation on which ai is built today if i say that you know if let's say i am looking at a scan image right of let's say eye what is happening the program will convert eye eye image scan image into numbers and the numbers are analyzed how are they analyzed we use the concept of calculus differential calculus integral calculus we use the concept of statistics we use the concept of probability it is through these things that i solve the problem so if i don't have a solid math and stats background i'm going to struggle and many of this is actually you know high school you know first year degree mathematics right but you need to understand mathematics from an application perspective here i am not talking of a theoretical mathematics i am talking of an applied mathematics that is very very important for someone wanting to build a career in ai and of course deep learning nlp is if you can tell me you know if this lecture were recorded can someone tell what is the most frequently used word by me an ai system with nlp will be able to say that right so that's what i wanted to cover there is one more question enlighten one short learning what is it one short learning i'm sorry i'm not able to understand what do you mean by one short learning uh, dr paul i think you can open the uh, forum for question answers uh, yes uh, thank you uh, sri gavin kumar for your highly informative session what is the neural link neural link project no as i said lot of interesting things are happening in fact deep learning is based on the way our human brain process information if let's say i am looking at a screen okay if i look at a red object certain parts of my brain will be fired certain neurons will fire if i look at a blue object certain other neurons will fire right it is the same concept we are using in deep learning if you choose a white color shirt certain parameters are important if i choose a blue color shirt certain other parameters are important this technology is growing okay 
So as I said, implant in brain and all that, still we are yes, far, far away from that. Any other questions? Sir, may I ask? Yes, please. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Sir, sir, my question I have I have written in the chat too that reinforce the one shot learning. Sir, I actually want to mention that the advancement of the reinforcement learning that there is some term is called one shot learning and there. Right. Is. See, the, the, there are two two types. What is called as supervised learning, unsupervised learning, and reinforcement learning. And these are the three types of learning that is used in AI. Okay, it's a. I need to go. You know, that's a very big topic. Uh, most of the research and uh, industry is using supervised and unsupervised only. Reinforcement still, you know, it is there to it is it is learning through mistakes. Okay, it's a very vast field, but technology has not grown as much in the area of reinforcement learning. What are the effect of bias? I think this is a very very important question. Okay, very important question. The, if you see the kind of people who are developing uh, uh, some of the algorithms, you know, you see that uh, typically Westerners, right, and typically males, and typically white Westerners, right, and invariably who come from a middle income at least, middle income or high income. So there is this concern that AI is geared more towards them. Right, AI is not really taking into uh, effect some of the expectations of you know other uh, 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 people, right? So this concern is there. Bias is a big issue, right? Because what is happening is I may like people who are like me, right? But when I am developing an algorithm, if let's say you are developing an algorithm to predict heart disease, okay? If you really see, I need to predict heart diseases in Indians. I need to predict heart diseases in Chinese also, because the prevalence of heart disease in Chinese is very low, whereas in Indians it is very high. Genetically, we are more prone to heart disease. But I can't develop a system only for Indians, right? Because I am an Indian. I need to develop the system for Chinese, for Caucasians, for black people, white people, everyone. I can't say that I'm an Indian, so I will develop uh, disease prediction only for Indians. So bias is an important factor. Yes, person who is from AI and a person who is a hacker. No, we can't say that, right? It is very difficult to say. Although, as I said, people who commit fraud are generally very intelligent people. Any kind of fraud. Right, especially technology-related fraud, they are very intelligent people. They are above average intelligence. Any other question? Yes, AI is able to self-improve, definitely. Definitely. That is one of the biggest advantages of AI. Any Can I go question? for the next question, sir? Yes. I want to know about Neuralink. I think I answered that actually. Views on black box AI. What is the black box AI? Sorry, not aware of that. Sir. Yes. Sir, the syllabus uh, taught in the universities and the colleges for the AI course, the easy that proper syllabus or a very year year old syllabus. Yeah, that's a good question. Okay, because what I have seen is uh, people are uh, because there are multiple aspects, right, to AI. There is the math component, there is the programming component, there is the algorithm component. I find that you know the syllabus that is there. Is not adequately addressing all three. I think as educators, you know, you can definitely address that, right? Because uh, 
we are still in the early days of ai like sir prologue is an is a suitable language till in in the till days uh, like for ai program yes prologue is a very correct. old correct see again there are many programming languages although python is the most widely used now yes sir i don't know if you have heard of go g o yes sir google use that google, language that is also something that is catching up right maybe 2 3 years down the road go may be used more we don't know yes any other questions yeah that is that's a point you know uh, black box ai right yes see uh, there is a new terminology called explainer ai right because how because when you have hundreds of factors it is difficult to identify which factor or it is difficult to know which factor is contributing more okay so it's sometimes difficult to explain why the algorithm has made a decision so to that extent the how part is is a black box right uh, still work is going on explainer ai is a very big concept that is we want a solution to explain to everyone let's say you know uh, uh, professor das you know is a uh, uh, selecting professor paul you know conducts a class right there are 60 students and pro paul picks one student as the best student if someone were to ask paul you know why you have chosen that student paul should be able to tell the reasons right today in ai in some cases we are not able to tell that is because of the complexity involved we are still working on that see the yes space telescope yes yes image processing they use image processing yes in fact our own uh, police and uh, army has started using image processing our external affairs uses uh, image processing you know for issuing passports and all that it is it has already started well privacy is always going to be a challenge right because more and more data is getting gathered see i will not say that we are go going away from nature right uh, this is what i will say that uh, this is a change right we all need to become comfortable with change thank you thank you so much sir thank you so much for uh, answering the many questions the doubts uh on the audience and your uh, uh, speech and session related to uh, emerging trends in artificial intelligence the application areas uh, as well as the what are happening today and uh, thanks sir for your Thank gracious you. presence and the informative session all the participants the researchers educators students are really benefited and hopefully they might have some questions in their mind through any digital delivery platform that particular parts will be cleared and nowadays just because of ai just because of other digital education systems uh, entire globe at your drawing room so any time virtually we can meet uh, or at, 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 and we can share our views everything Close. Sure. uh so thanks sir uh, thank you yeah thanks sir and uh, may i now request our organizing team uh, uh on behalf of iconias 2021 uh please uh, uh just we want to offer humbly uh, a small token of appreciation to mr govin kumar thank you sir thank you sir please accept it please thank accept it yeah, thank I you sir it. thank, thank you, sir. you so much for your thank you sir for thank you so much for your gracious presence sure, uh, sure. yes now the moderator uh, the organizing secretary please so the food station please accept this program of appreciation
Yes, thank you. I accept it, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, Robin, sir, for the session, a lively session. We hope that we'll be able to meet you virtually further. Uh, fourth session, uh, that is from, we would like to hear from Dr. Vinay Kumar. I would like to request Uh, Shumu Paz, Shumu Paz. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon. I'd like to request uh, our topic. Yeah. This will be itself. Yeah. So, uh, may I now request Dr. Binay Kumar? Sorry, sir. I think uh, Mr. Shubruji, they... Uh, may I now request Dr. Binay Kumar, Associate Professor and Program Manager, Data Science and Business Analytics, MIT Walt Disney University, Pune. And in our conference, we had three parts already mentioned by our program chair, the artificial intelligence, intelligence system, and informatics. So here, Dr. Binay Kumar, will like the opportunities in data sciences. So may I now request the organizing team to share this bio. Please. Am I audible, ma'am? Yeah, yeah, audible, sir. Yes, yeah, sir. Audible, completely audible. Yeah. Dr. Birai Kumar is the associate professor and program manager for data science Business Analytics and AIML at WPU RISE. He has 12 years of experience in industry and various reputed and yes, leading sir. institute as, as business management, business analytics, and data science expert and teacher. He was previously associated with Chandigarh University, IBM Training, ITM Kargar, TIMSR Mumbai, SB Patil Institute of Management Pune, and ICICI Group. He has been qualified the, in the prestigious IBM Academy Certificate Examination for Business Intelligence Analyst 2018 V2 Mastery and Explorer Examination for for professional in IBM Cognos from Asia Pacific Skill Academy, Singapore. He is IBM certified trainer on machine learning using Python. He has completed faculty development program machine learning using Python from IIM Bangalore. He has published more than 30 research papers in SCUPA's national and international journals and presented in IIMs and other leading institute of India. He has delivered session as resource person in more than 25 FDPs and workshop on Python, machine learning, advanced Excel, SPSS statistics, etc. for various leading institute of Mumbai and Pune Bhais Symbiosis Institute, Pune, Department of Management, PUMBA of Sabitri Bai Phule University, Pune, Sri Vishwakarma Skill University, Haryana. He has attended FDPs in IIM Bangalore, IIM Lucknow, IIM Trichulapalli, etc. Now, I would request Dr. Binoy Kumar sir to share his ideas with us. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Subrajit Day. Uh, thank you for a generous introduction. Uh, let me my, uh, share my screen first. I hope you can uh, see my screen and I hope you, uh, I'm audible. Kindly confirm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you very much. 
I would like to thank uh, and congratulate the team of organizers of this prestigious international conference on informatics, uh, artificial intelligence and intelligent system 2021. Especially the program chair and CEO, uh, Dr. P.K. Paul, for inviting me for invited lectures. I would also uh, like to thank all the respected keynote speakers, Professor uh, Sunil Sharma, Associate Dean Operations and Professor Informa Information Systems, MCB, Ball State University, Indiana, USA. Professor Damodar uh, Gurapu, Honorable Vice Chancellor, Chaitanya Deemed to be University, Telangana, India. Uh, Sri Govind Kumar, CEO and President, Edu NDI, Innovating Intelligence. I'm thrilled and uh, excited to share the stage with such reputed and notable uh, educationists across the globe. Wishing all the very best to all the paper presenters in this uh, international conference. Uh, I have been given the topic that is opportunities in data science. So uh, one by one uh, in every slide, I would uh, be uh, sharing the information what uh, we as a student or even the, uh, as a faculty, we, we can explore the data science as uh, education as well as uh, as a career. So uh, basically the data science itself is the part of AI. Uh, and uh, let me start the data science. Uh, actually data science is a subject where we uh, learn some part of the AI, especially machine learning or the deep learning as uh, already our uh, previous speakers have mentioned a lot about it. So I, I hope that everybody is aware that what we do uh, uh, learn in the AI. AI is a mother of everything. And under the AI itself, many uh, subjects like uh, data science and then deep learning, then machine learning, uh, we, we, we uh, study. So uh, I'm talking about the data science. Basically, I'm talking about some part of the concepts of AI itself. So let us start with the data. Uh, data is basically a plural word. Uh, the singular term of data is called datum. It is like bacterium and bacteria, thanks to the Greek and uh, Latin words, root words, which develop the, uh, the English language, like Sanskrit developed the Hindi language. So we, we need to go to the root as uh, uh, data is basically the plural word. If somebody asks you, uh, forgive me, I'm just talking to the student in this, this uh, term as, uh, if somebody asks what is the plural of data, just mention that data itself is plural term. We, we generally forget, uh, tend to forget that data might be the singular term, but it is not. So data are units of information, uh, often numeric, but uh, when, whenever I'm saying often numeric, uh, let me also uh, acknowledge that more than 80% or approximately 80% data happens to be in the text form that are collected through observations. So uh, observation, when, when we were listening, uh, uh, one of our previous speaker is, we captured the data in the mall or the store, uh, modern uh, retail outlet nowadays, through the webcam or camera, or even through photograph. That is only because whatever the subjects we used to study from mathematics, English, Sanskrit, any language, and then economics is statistics. We tend to understand that whenever we use the term data, it is related to statistics. But nowadays, because uh, after uh, getting passed from 10th, 12th graduation, post graduation, PhD, and our uh, working professional uh, environment, we understood that data, it means it could be from the uh, uh, vaccination related data, it could be from uh, historical data, it could be from uh, biological data, everything is data itself. It is not related to uh, statistics only. Then comes the financial data. Financial data, uh, we can talk about the stock behavior. We can uh, talk about the stock pricing or the changing of the stock pricing or the banking sector or insurance sector or financial services sector. So their financial data is very, very uh, necessary. How the value of even Bitcoin uh, could be the example of uh, financial uh, data. Then scientific data, I, I was just mentioning about the vaccination process or biotech uh, or the genome sequencing. These are the data uh, or we were uh, talking about the hospital uh, management uh, process or the hospital uh, that is called the healthcare informatics there. We use the scientific data, uh, which may be related to uh, biological data, okay? data related to human being or any uh, life being. 
and then cultural data would be related to uh, literature would be related to the conversation or a statement or the words or we were talking about the nlp so uh, those would be the part of cultural data uh, then what is data science so uh, because we have understood the data now we should understand the science uh, briefly science is a kind of methodology you may say in hindi we we call it as paddhati or the the way we we act that is called science so it is a kind of systems we we should follow for example uh, if you are doing research uh, methodology so methodology is the part of science how we should do it what we should do what we should not do so do's and don'ts of, of the uh, operation is called the science so when when we merge the data word with the science it becomes the data science uh, whenever we use this particular terms simultaneously or together we feel that this particular thing is related to computer science or uh, it may be related to mathematics or it may be related, related to somewhat uh, the uh, statistics but basically data science uh, in, in the simpler form if i can explain it as whatever we do with the data is called the data science okay so whatever that for, for a kind of uh, process we do with the data whatever we play with the data whatever the process or we can say pre processing or we can say eda that is exploratory data analysis so whatever we do with the data with a methodology that is called the data science in the simplest manner we should understand so data science is an interdisciplinary field that uses scientific methods processes algorithms and systems to extract knowledge and insights from a structured and unstructured data so structured data would be in the form of csv or excel file whatever the data we put during our research and unstructured data we were talking about the image processing uh, video processing uh, those data which needs to be converted into the numerical form or the data form or in a binary form zero to one form that is called the unstructured data so as we speak for example whatever i am speaking it could be converted into numbers whatever the image uh, we are clicking or whatever the video streaming is being done this can be converted into data so these are the example of unstructured data structured data which has been already kept in the excel or csv format uh, then we should un understand the evolution of the information to knowledge to wisdom so generally uh, in the younger age we used to collect the information then uh, when when we get developed then we try to derive some uh, knowledge out of it then we call it, let's say i'm phd so a phd could be considered as a knowledge uh, kind of thing but what about wisdom so i feel yet to go into that particular stage after 10 12 15 20 25 30 years after, uh, after that i may having some wisdom about the life so the same thing happens in the uh, a uh, data science also what is the data is there it is basically we have understood data in the information then it comes to the insights part so this insight is the knowledge and the wisdom part so through data science we we collect the data uh, of the people any people it could be customer for the, if we are doing the business we collect the data and then uh, we we collect the uh, we extract the information uh, sorry the knowledge and the wisdom from it or that is called the insight and then this insight and wisdom is uh, is the integral or the raw material part of the decision making so on the basis of the data because we should understand that initially when data science was not there when the computerization was not there when the uh, methodology or the algorithm were not there uh, people used to do business through the gut feeling or through the experience that's why uh, uh, whatever the senior people uh, uh, commands to the junior people in the family uh, or the family member in the business they used to follow it so th this is because of the experience and the gut feeling but now a days uh, even the youngest person can do the better business in the form of uh, because of the help of the uh, capturing the data seeing the inside seeing the dashboard and uh, we were talking about the dss that is decision system uh, support system uh, and then on the basis of the intelligence of the data or the pattern of the data the youngest person also can uh, obviously they, they should be having the ability to understand the data and the pattern then they can take the business decision so nowadays that's why we we can see in the industry also 
that uh, the average age is com comparatively lesser as compared to the historical data uh, in the senior positions. So that, that is the data science where we uh, see the pattern from the data and uh, we, we take the decision. So this is basically the data science. Now, uh, in these slides, basically, we will be learning the two uh, aspects of the business. Uh, that is uh, the top areas where CEO plans to make technology investments over the next three years. So we should understand that what uh, the top level people are thinking in the industry, basically, uh, uh, for the future. So 85% uh, of the uh, CEO, uh, or you can say, uh, yeah, these are the area where CEO are planning uh, for the in technology investment because we know uh, if if we need to grow into the business, we have to get maximum profit. And how to get the maximum profit? Either you increase the uh, the manpower quality or you can uh, invest in the technology. So which are the areas where the people, uh, the senior people, or the senior management are looking for the uh, highest investment? So one is the Internet of Things. We have already understood uh, in some of the lectures. Uh, that Internet of Things is the future. Even, even we, we, we are uh, currently also we are using this particular thing, but it is on a development page and this is growing. Uh, data analytics tools, so that is 85%. Cognitive technologies, we should understand what is cognitive. Cognitive means whatever a man or human being uh, can understand or uh, uh, process the information or reasoning or questioning kind of thing. So reasoning and understanding are the major keywords for to understand the cognitive technologies. And then robotics process, process automation. This kind of uh, uh, process automation we can find in the HR also. Previously, each and every aspect of the uh, HR or human resource process uh, happens to be manually. But nowadays we can see the automation of everything. Okay, So that is called process automation. Then if you see about the areas where CEO plans to make high investment over the next three years are the digital infrastructure, innovation, regulatory compliances, and emerging technologies. So if we skip the regulatory compliances also, we can find the emerging technologies, which we have already understood, that is Internet of Things, Data Analytics Tool, Cognitive Technologies, and RPA, that is Robotic Process Automation. But if you see the innovation, innovation is nothing but the if you would like to increase the market share, if you would like to increase the uh, revenue share, then definitely you should be innovative. Why Apple is having more uh, profit than Samsung or the Nokia combined? Because of the innovation, only, innovative product. The same thing happens with the uh, Amazon also, Amazon uh, uh, online, uh, uh, their e-retailing basically. So because of the, the, their uh, innovation itself, we used to uh, buy the grocery from the mom and pop stores nearby uh, to our home. But nowadays we order from the uh, Amazon uh, e, 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 e portal. So that is the innovation. Whatever the benefits it is drawing from, it is because of the innovation. So every industry should uh, think about it. Every company should think about it and they should invest on this. Then digital infrastructure, it is about, let's say, uh, either having the YouTube channel or the good website or good good portal, and then uh, e-commerce, getting into e-commerce, then mobile uh, transition could be there, apps you could develop, and then uh, you can develop the Hadoop system where uh, you should talk about the big data, whatever the consumers are there. Let's say you are having the one crore of customer base. So you should uh, work upon the CRM, that is customer relationship management. So that is the uh, example of digital infrastructure. So ultimately, the business is moving to the digital form. That's why uh, CEO are planning to make high investment. So if everything uh, is being converted into digital infrastructure, we as a student, we as a future employee of the organization, or even we as a teacher should understand how business is behaving, how business is changing, how business is developing, and then we should learn uh, the subject like uh, data science, and we should have the idea about uh, the AI also. So uh, technology continues to be the uh, at the forefront. CEO believes that technology is likely to be one of the top two factors impacting the growth of their organization in the next three years. So many believe data is the oil and gold. So this we should understand. This is called the underneath uh, behavior of uh, the consumers. Okay. How can data improve business? So we should understand. I was talking about the gut feeling of the business and the experience related 
decisions in the business but everything uh, is data driven now so how we actually we should understand how the data is related to business so first point is improve market uh, strategy market strategy uh, com uh, comprises of product price place promotion uh, people physical evidence and uh, uh, process so uh, these seven things if you uh, make any strategy related to this everything would be related to uh, or the driven by data for example if you start with the product so what Whatever the product you are designing, whatever the requirement of the customers, uh, I would like to cite one example over here. That is, uh, we were knowing that uh, Nokia was having 90% market share, but it failed to understand the undercurrent requirement of the consumers. And then Samsung captured uh, the requirement that people would like to shift from the uh, keypad related uh, mobile or the feature mobile to the touch screen related mobile or, or the uh, smartphones. So uh, now you can see the scenario that Nokia is nowhere, where uh, the Samsung is the market leader, especially in India. So this is called the improved market strategy on the basis of the collecting the data from the customers and designing strategy accordingly. Then detecting fraud, we were discussing uh, in our previous sessions that the detecting fraud is, let's say, uh, in Amazon itself, or let's say you are running the ICICI bank, and then uh, you understood that some transaction is being uh, fraudulently uh, managed and then the AI system or the uh, computer itself or your algorithm to uh, predict it and then uh, fetch the data data out of the millions or the billions uh, transactions. And then you can uh, save your company in right time. Uh, let me also uh, put this example as, uh, let's say you are running a seven star hotel and then you, you, you would like to give the good customer uh, care or the good customer uh, experience why to wait the lift should be uh, first damaged and then you will be repairing rather you should predict it beforehand and then uh, uh, you should get it repaired timely you should get uh, replace the uh, uh, the broken part of the lift and then your customer will uh, experience the uninterrupted uh, quality service okay so we we first detect the thing the computer or, or the mechanism or the algorithm predicts this uh, transaction and, and then you can uh, detect the fraud to uh, save your company. Identifying pain points. So how to understand the pain points? Generally in interview, we as a student face that, what is the improvement areas in your uh, uh, life kind of thing. So likewise, uh, a company also have some uh, pain points or we can also say as improvement uh, areas. So uh, why a, a company is second or third rank uh, in, in its business? Because of the, there are the numbers of uh, uh, pain points are there, which needs to be improved uh, thoroughly or you can say regularly to beat the top uh, player. So because of the data, whatever the data of business we are having through intelligence system, we, we should understand those patterns and we should rectify it standing. Then improving customer experience. I had given the example of lift in seven star or five star hotel. Uh, again, any any uh, company, if you would like to give better uh, customer experience, definitely uh, you should uh, think about the. Kindly mute yourself. Participants are requesting kindly mute yourself. Uh, improve accuracy of decision making. So uh, let's say uh, how to understand this point is, can we say that whatever the decision we have made, how much would be it correct? So many times it could be less than 40% correct, 50%, 60%, 70%, 80% correct. But we, we, we don't understand uh, how this is going to uh, perform in the actual business or the industry. But in computer uh, algorithm, we do understand that if we train the computer uh, with the data, then uh, whatever the algorithm we are seeing, that there is a concept called, uh, we should, uh, uh, previous, uh, beforehand we should understand that what is the predictability of this particular uh, algorithm. So it comes to let's say 80%, 80 in some other, uh, uh, let, let me cite some uh, algorithm. There is this one algorithm called the uh, random forest. One algorithm is called the decision tree. Uh, one algorithm is called the logistic regression. So each and every uh, different algorithms are there to predict the thing. So we should fit into our uh, the data uh, as per their 
the algorithm's requirement and we should find out where we can get the maximum predictability, whether we are getting 90% predictability or 95% predictability. We should understand that we are not the God. We don't, we can't see the future, likewise AI also. So we can't have the 100% predictability. At least some part could get into failure. Uh, it could be less, th less than 1% or uh, less than 0.5% kind of, but 100% cannot be uh, done. So that is called the improved uh, accuracy of decision making through data in, in the business. And then automatic execution. We have heard about the uh, robotic uh, doctor or the uh, operation happens through the robot science projects. So let's say, uh, please uh, understand that uh, this particular data science is uh, cross, uh, what should I say, the domain, okay? So whichever sector is having data, you can find the data scientist. In, uh, and this varies from agriculture to aviation. You name the sector, uh, that because the data is available, information is available, you can have these kind of roles over there, okay? So this is, we should understand that data scientists will not be uh, placed into only uh, computer related uh, company or let's say uh, uh, IT companies, rather they could be placed into hospitals also, they could be placed into agriculture related company also, or manufacturing related companies also, any any company. That's why this is called the cross domain uh, expertise or cross domain area. So they handle end-to-end -end data science projects. So whatever the data structure they would be designing, collecting the data, pre-processing the data, and then uh, finding the suitable, uh, what should I say, the infrastructure to put that particular data, and then uh, getting the algorithm uh, uh, to predict that, that that particular decision. And then whatever the, the their output would be, this would, would be working as a... Uh, 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 what should I say, the either precursor or the raw material for the decision makers. So data scientists are not the decision makers. Data scientists are the support to the decision makers. So let's say CEO is there uh, who are the top decision maker or, uh, in the company. So the, they will be uh, taking the insights from the data scientists because you have understood how data is being converted into the insights. There are some methodology process uh, there are some uh, algorithm needs to be understood. We, we understood that statistics is needed, mathematics, basics of mathematics is needed. So they are an expert into it, okay? So this is the profile of the data scientist. Then analyzes large amount of data, create prediction models and present findings. So they should be having very good communication skill in terms of the data visualization, where they will portray that if this is the data, then what, uh, uh, what can be drawn out of this data and then decision maker will take the decision on the basis of obviously their experience and the uh, uh, the support uh, from the data scientists because they they, they, they are uh, having uh, they have seen multiple uh, business scenario multiple business cycles so they on the basis of experience they will be taking the decision. Data scientists are not the people who will be taking the decision for the company. Now, what are the skills required? Statistics, programming, communication, and domain knowledge. So as I said about the domain knowledge, if they would be placed into agriculture sector, they should uh, know how the agriculture sector works, how the seasonality works, how the uh, they should be knowing about the uh, soil fertility. They should be knowing about the, they should have some biology background of, let's say, uh, the, uh, the uh, urea or whatever the uh, chemicals are needed. For, for, uh, they should have the idea of the fertilizer, fertilizers, and then they should understand the uh, even the meteorological functions how this works. So this is called domain knowledge. So nobody is expert in each and every domain knowledge. Let's say somebody is, is expert in uh, petrochemical sector, somebody is expert in telecom sector, somebody is expert, expert in e-retailing sector. So th that is called domain knowledge. So they should be having good uh, domain knowledge. Communication skill I have already mentioned because they have to present the data to the management. Programming, yes. Uh, if you see the statistics and programming, uh, the, statist the statistics people uh, may not be from the science background, okay, but programming majorly are from mathematics and the computer science background. So it is a kind of combination. We should not say that this uh, data science is only for the computer science graduates or mathematics graduates. Even statistics, which may be 
from the arts background or commerce background or even science background so it is a good combination of statistics as well as programming okay. uh, salary starts with the 10 lakh per annum okay so you can say approximately 80 90 thousand per month okay that is good salary for the entry level okay now data engineer uh, uses computer science to help process large data sets large data set again it, it can be called as big data manages database and cleans data for further analysis so we should understand data engineer collects the data pre processes the data and provides the uh, uh, data filtered data or the processed data or the refined data to data scientist okay so data engineer could be a supportive post for uh, to the data scientist data scientist design the things data in, uh, de design the thing in the form of the strategy you can say not exactly uh, the um, computer uh, related uh, designing but data engineer is computer related uh, profile is there so we can say yes uh, arts and commerce students are having difficulty to be the data engineer but uh, mathematics oriented uh, students or let's say computer science oriented students are good uh, suitable uh, uh, students for the data engineer okay because they have to understand the infrastructure how to what is big what is uh, big data what is a uh, uh, database management system how to extract the data how to do the data mining these are the areas for the data engineer so big data is one of the skill they should be knowing programming is very much common and then database management system which i have already mentioned the so big database they should be uh, knowing how to do the data mining uh, that is the uh, Uh, skill of uh, data engineering then uh, it is lesser than 10 lakh obviously uh, because it is the support uh, profile of the data to the data set now comes the data analyst so you can say uh, it is the very uh, 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 not i should say the superficial but i should say the initial level of the profile where uh, if they are not knowing the programming also that that is fine that is good enough so even a uh, arts student uh, practice a lot let's say if we if i talk about the uh, tableau or power bi or even the statistics or let's say if i say the term visualization so if somebody is expert in excel in in the making of uh, let's say pie charts or bar graph or donut chart or the uh, heat map they are good suitable for the data uh, analysis so what is the profile performs ad hoc analysis in descriptive predictive and diagnostic modes so we know that after doing the uh, I means uh, before doing the data analysis we have to do the data pre processing that is also called the descriptive statistics okay or the descriptive analytics that is the profile of data analyst and then performs visualization of data so whatever the visualization would be suggested by the data scientist the data analyst will do it okay or on his own or in, on her own uh, the data analyst will perform the data visualization i have mentioned some names that is tableau and power bi kind of thing. even excel even we, we can do on power uh, the python and r also the data visualization so that is their profile statistics and programming are the skills required i i have said that uh, this can be uh, done by the arts people also commerce people also no need to have the ma mathematics or the science background uh statistics and program a little bit program what kind of programming uh if you see the tableau and power bi many things are uh, ui based user uh, interface based so you can have the menu over there you can drag and drop so not uh, like uh, data scientist and data engineer programming knowledge is needed but the basic uh, knowledge is more than sufficient and they are definitely uh, approximately 7 lakh is the per annum uh, salary of those people these are the opportunities in data science so if you can see the nokri.com indeed.com uh, uh in nokri.com data science scientist job 13881 uh, data scientist uh, openings are there indeed you can find uh, data engineers jobs uh, linkedin 7000 data science jobs in greater bangalore area which is number one uh, bangalore is number one in terms of the if you see the uh, geographical differentiation or the geographical uh, what should i say the openings of the jobs or the uh, suitable area for the uh, employee to join over there 
Then Indeed.com is saying 8,293 data science jobs and vacancies are uh, there in Bangalore. And LinkedIn is again saying uh, 26,000 plus data engineer jobs in India are available. So these are the good promising area where uh, if we can see the uh, satisfaction uh, or the maturation level of the industry is there, but in data science it is the beginning. Okay. How uh, career progression happens for the data in the data science area? First, you become the analyst. We have already seen entry-level job, then senior analyst, then you become the data scientist. We have already understood this. Then senior, senior data scientist will become director data analysis or business analysis because you, you would be having multiple uh, cycles of the business and then you will be understanding on the basis of your experience how business behaves. And then you'll become the vice president of the company and then chief data officer or the chief data scientist, which is a kind of parallel to CEO, like uh, CTO was introduced into the organization, chief technical technology officer. Likewise, chief data scientist officer or chief data officer are the new profiles are being created in every organization. What are the skills required, basically? So uh, whatever we, we are going to learn in this particular slide, uh, these, these are the steps also to do the data science or uh, these are the skills also. So first, you, we, we should understand or to frame the problem. Whenever we do any kind of research analysis or the, uh, even in PSD or any uh, report writing, we should understand what is the problem, or which problem we are talking about, what kind of problem is existing in the society or the industry uh, or, or the human behavior. So we, we define, so it is called in PSD that if you define your PSD title, your half of the PhD is done because now you got the direction and you, you define your scope of work. Okay? So frame the problem. For that, you should have the domain knowledge. And that's why whenever uh, we do any kind of research uh, project, we should go to our guides or the senior people. I, I use the term focus group interview. We should understand on the basis of their experience where we could go, 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 uh, go wrong. So that should not be happened. We should not uh, put up a uh, uh, single word in our uh, title or any uh, project title, which would lead us in a uh, uh, wrong direction. So every word is very important. To me. So domain knowledge is there. Understanding business strategy is there. Unless you understand the domain, for example, let's say uh, we are the student of uh, our subject. And then anytime we go to the field and we start doing agriculture, can we succeed? So it would be difficult. Why? Are we very much knowledgeable uh, in agriculture area? We, we have knowledge of different areas. Are we having the knowledge of agriculture? Uh, do, do have a, we spend some time or some years in the agriculture to understand the pattern? Probably no. So that's why uh, we cannot say the agriculture is a very easy thing and we, we, we are very much aware because we are knowledgeable people. So that is called the domain knowledge. So we should un differentiate the term domain and knowledge. We, we may have the knowledge, but we may not be having the domain knowledge. So we should have the domain knowledge of, of a particular area so that we can uh, deep dive into uh, the decision making and our decision may, be not, uh, may not be wrong. May, maximum time it should be correct decision. Okay. Next skill is process the data. So after deciding uh, the topic or the title, we, we go to the process the data that is also called pre-processing. It is also called EDA that is exploratory descriptive analytics or even called the descriptive analytics or even called the descriptive statistics. So scripting language like R or Python. So these are the tools through which we process the data. Processing the data means uh, filter out the impurities uh, from it and then getting the refined data. Okay. Then data wrangling and cleaning, it is the same thing. Wrangling itself is the cleaning. Okay. Explore the data. We should understand that who are the respondents. For example, uh, let's say if I'm talking to uh, approximately 150 plus people, we, I should have the idea that whom I'm talking, how many students are there? Uh, if the students are there, then how many uh, males are there? How many females are there? What are their age group? These are called the uh, demographic data. I should, demos means people, graphic means measurement. We should measure the people as a teacher, as a presenter, as a marketeer. And uh, what are their tests from which area they belong to? What is their expectations? And then uh, what is their subjects in their graduation? What is their inclination? Whether they are going to learn AI, whether 
they are going to learn data science, uh, whether they are from mathematics background. This is called exploring the data. So the moment we uh, start exploring the data, we will find the uh, insights. So for example, I have not done any exercise to learn uh, my audience. And then I'm, I'm just speaking. Let's say if I get a kind of pie chart that these are the uh, detailing of their gender, uh, marital uh, status, then their uh, uh, hometown, their subject in Grayson. So generally, name, age, gender, occupation, income, marital status are generally called the demographic data. Then obviously my words will be changed, my approach will be changed, my uh, level will be changed. Okay. So that is called exploring the data. It is very, very necessary to uh, go through your data, who, whom you are talking basically. So scientific computing, inferential statistics. So statistics is of two types, basically inferential and descriptive. So uh, in descriptive, we, we understand that, okay, this is the description. Uh, 10 people are there, five are, or let's say, three are female and remaining are male kind of thing. So that is inference, uh, that is descriptive statistics. But in inferential statistics, um, uh, we can say whether their uh, knowledge is related to the questions they're asking. So is there any correlation? So how much it is the correlation? Who are asking more questions, whether they are from mathematics background or they are from arts background? This is called inferential statistics. Perform in-depth analysis, that is machine learning, advanced statistics. So uh, we discuss about the, there are multiple uh, algorithms are available in machine learning on the basis of the data, on the basis of the requirement, on the basis of the probable output, we decide the algorithm. Okay, that is machine learning or advanced statistics. Uh, if you see the SPSS software, if you see the uh, theory of statistics, you'll find the logistic regression, you'll find the factor analysis. These are advanced statistics through which we perform in-depth analysis uh, of the uh, data. And then communicate results, data visualization and data storytelling. That's why communication is very much needed. Let's say I'm a very good performer in research, but I'm not good uh, a communicator then definitely uh, who is going to listen to me, okay? So it is like uh, ground reporting is good, but the news reader is not good. So what is the uh, use of that particular data? It should be uh, imbibed by the target uh, customers, okay? It could be the uh, CEO of the company, it could be the consumers, uh, or it could be the investor who, who is sponsoring that particular research. So communication is one of the most important aspect of the skill set uh, to become a good data scientist. Uh, as I told you that uh, the data science is not exactly the uh, computer science or the mathematics, rather uh, it is a combination of statistics, then domain knowledge of that particular area, and then programming, a little bit programming. Uh, now, why uh, Python is uh, needed? Because Python is being developed and adopted by those people who are not having programming background. That's why it is attracting to uh, people from arts, people from commerce, and people from biology background who are not having the mathematics background. And that's why, uh, because large large uh, number of people are accept, uh, accepting the Python. That's why Python is number one uh, software is being used in terms of the data science. That is called programming. So it can be learned. Okay? Com comfortably learned, it could be easily learned. Okay? Uh, what we should look out uh, in a data science program Tentatively, three hours is a good number of the learning uh, in terms of the uh, delivery of the sessions. Then uh, there should be learning analysis and interpretation of the data. Then uh, designed, uh, it should be designed for application in diverse domain, as, as I mentioned, from agriculture to aviation. Each and every domain uh, uh, case study should be discussed in that particular uh, course. Then advanced modeling and visualization. I, I, I mentioned that uh, Tableau is there, Power BI is there. Whatever the data analysis you do, if we, unless you present it in a, uh, what should I say, in a loving manner or attractive manner or eye appealing manner, then it is of no use. Okay? Then multidisciplinary participants should be there. Why? Because it is for all the domain area. So all the people should be from multiple disciplinary, disciplinary participants. Uh, whenever you join any uh, data science program, let's say if you find all the computer science graduates, and then you find that you are only from the commerce or the arts background, uh, that is not a good uh, environment to learn the data science. You should have the people across 
all the uh, discipline. And then coverage of tools are the uh, Python is the market leader, R is the second market leader. So it should be there. Now, uh, how the course curriculum should be there. First should be introduction to data science. Second is data visualization uh, using Tableau or the Power BI. Third should be statistics essential for data science because we might be knowing statistics, but a, reference, a, refer, a refresher course in statistics is going to help everyone to understand the data uh, science uh, in a better way. The R programming should be there. Fifth is data science with Python should be there. Python uh, basics should be learned, learned because everything in machine learning, which is the sixth module, should, uh, uh, the machine learning should be learned on the basis of Python. Okay, it is like we say the the language of research methodology is statistics. Likewise, we can say uh, the language of machine learning is Python. Then uh, seventh, uh, big data analytics, we, we uh, understood throughout our uh, three uh, earlier session that big data is going to stay uh, because of the big data. Uh, many companies are adopting this kind of technology. So we should understand what is big data, what is Hadoop, what is the infrastructure, how to manage the data. Please understand everywhere Excel is not, not going to help. Uh, if we keep the data in Excel, it would be having, let's say, 5 MB, 10 MB kind of thing. But what about the 2 GB set of the data, 3 GB, 4 GB set of data? It is huge data in, in millions and billions. So we, we should understand how this uh, big data or the large size of the data should be handled. The natural language processing, I said 80% of the data available in the text format. You can see the LinkedIn, Facebook, WhatsApp, uh, Instagram. Uh, YouTube, everywhere, uh, even Wikipedia, everywhere you can see uh, languages are there, uh, English words are there. It needs to be understood how we should get the sentiment out of the uh, whatever the people are writing on our websites about the feedback or the review about our product or service. We should understand their sentiment. So this figure should be converted into numbers. So that's why natural language processing should be there. Uh, ninth is web scrapping. Why web scrapping? Because 80% of the data available in the form of text and uh, you, you collect the data through web scrapping, there are billions of the uh, websites available. Let's say even Wikipedia, if you go, you can get multiple uh, information over there. Or you can get, go, go to, let's say, any uh, e-commerce website, you'll find multiple reviews uh, in lakhs. Then you should uh, scrap the data, uh, you should convert it into the Excel form. And then you should understand what people are thinking about. So what, what is happening in Twitter? Twitter, People are reacting into one particular post. And then we should understand that people are talking positive or negative about that particular. That, that process is called web scrapping. The last one is introduction to deep learning and AI. So obviously, AI is mother of everything. And we should know what is AI. AI is future, basically. So whatever we, we learn in the basics of Python to AI, that is the whole curriculum of the uh, data science and introduction to deep learning. Deep learning is again a kind of machine learning as uh, one of our previous speaker mentioned. The deep learning is a kind of machine learning and that's why there is another subject called AI and uh, ML. So if you see the model number 10, it is a uh, precursor to the new subject that is called AI and ML because the ML is deep learning itself. So this is uh, from my side. Thank you very much for the patient uh, listening. And thank you for the uh, opportunity given to me. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Vinay Kumar, uh, for highly informative and interesting uh, session for one of our uh, emerging uh, domains in computer science, emerging domain in artificial intelligence. Uh, uh, and all of the highly benefited with the data science role, opportunities, and career programming. Thank you, Dr. Vinay Kumar. Thank you so much, sir, for your precious presence. And, thank you very uh, much, sir. Thank you. Sir, and sir, sir I, have a, I have one question to you. Uh, yes, what sir. are the yes. universities currently offering data science program? What are the popular universities? In data science hey, programs. Yeah. Thank you, sir, for the question. Actually, uh, we are on the verge of designing the curriculum Are we uh, as a faculty very um, uh, various faculties uh, across the uh, India, if I say, we are trying to understand the good combination or good recipe for this particular subject. And it starts with north to south, uh, majorly every alternative uh, or not alternative, approximately 5 to 10% of the organizations are offering this kind of course. 
there, but definitely let me also uh, acknowledge that we should go for the curriculum as i mentioned that what they are offering what is the uh, economical way of uh, getting the things what are kind of the uh, industry company uh, connections they are having what kind of packages they are offering and what kind of faculties they are having so this is the good combination should be there for the students to uh, join this kind of program but definitely each and every organization are trying to offer this kind of course the only thing is that we should understand whether the curriculum has been designed in a, in a proper way or not okay sir thank you to so, over to somit kumar sir thank you sir yeah yeah thank you uh, absolutely 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 right sir and uh, in our university more than abul kalam azad professor of technology also few colleges in our college uh, in the almost one of the Uh, college in under Mullah Abdul Kalam Azad University Technology. We are offering the courses uh, under B Tech courses in data science, and uh, also some certificate courses under our university. Yeah. Uh, uh, thank you. Thanks, uh, Dr. Vinay Kumar, for highly informative and interesting session. And hopefully, all of our educators, researchers, and students are highly benefited, and they can apply uh, these areas in their. Uh, this is one of the cutting edge technologies these areas in their respective research domain uh, once again thanks dr vinay kumar for your gracious presence uh, may i have request uh, the moderator uh, uh, from on behalf of uh, icon years 2021 uh, we humbly want to offer a small token of appreciation uh, to uh, dr vinay kumar thank you dr samya pal for this nice uh, platform and uh, giving me the opportunity to speak thank you sir sir please accept it sir. thank you sir thanks a lot thanks a lot the organizing committee especially dr pk pal sir thank you everyone thank you thank you thank you thank you dr vinay kumar for your nicely informative session thanks a lot sir thanks uh, a lot sir yeah thank you shushita madam please Uh, now uh, i would like to call dr p k pal sir because we have a great opportunity to for inauguration of his books uh, just of his books one is information one is uh, from new delhi publishers that is the first one is a uh, informatics for society and management the emergence the editors are uh, dr p k pal dr somo pal and s mewara and another one is that title of the book is that emerging trends and new horizons in applied sciences to selected topics on bio and physical sciences these are the two books which are going to be inaugurated dr pa pk pal sir just so just manage Uh, organizing secretary is requested to share the cover page of the book please yeah this is the first book the informatics for society and thank you sir please so thank you madam for uh, we feel that this is a good opportunity at this international conference platform because this book was sponsored by new delhi publishers and today's conference also sponsored by knowledge partner as new delhi publishers so we got this opportunity to honor these books officially from today this book will be available from the publishers and also from the online platform as a hard copy and as a soft copy this means i'm sharing this this book contains total 14 chapters contributed by many authors and reviewers we have more than 50 reviewers contributed the reading process so another book i think may you may show another book so thank you all the paper presenters for this conference also because we are going to release our next book based on the paper collection of this conference very soon so this is a great opportunity for all the paper presenters those who are going to present their work today their book will also be released very soon so thanks for your submission so this book is applied emerging uh, applied science emerging in horizons 
and this book is also authored by Dr. T. K. Paul and apart from Dr. Devabrat Bhadro and Kuntal Vishas and two other dignitaries. Similar to previous books also, in this book also we have around 21 book chapters, different part of the country and more than 60 reviewers have contributed their review process. I, on this behalf of this uh, occasion of inaugurating this book, congratulate everyone, every authors, every editors, New Delhi publishers, and all, all the knowledge community. I also thank Professor Shomopal, one of the editor of another book of informatics on this grand occasion. So over to Shomopal, sir, to say a few words. Uh, thank you, sir. This is the great opportunity uh, to share these two books. Actually, uh, whatever papers, selected papers, we have keep, and the paper will be presented in the our paper presentation section. These papers should maybe after selection will be also published in the book of uh, New Delhi Publishing and our New Delhi participants also our knowledge department. So it is a great opportunity for young researchers, students, educators, and faculty members to publish their, publish their articles in editors' book chapter. And we are thankful to uh, New Delhi publishers who have agreed to publish the conference uh, proceedings of the book in this in their uh, new upcoming book. Thanks to all. Thanks to Dr. Peter. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you sir. Please, please participate. Mute yourself. Mute yourself. Please. All the participants are requested. Kindly fill your feedback form. Feedback form. Feedback form is given in your chat box in Zoom and also in YouTube. All of you are requested. Kindly fill the feedback form. Without the filling the feedback form, we are unable to give the certificate. So kindly fill feedback form carefully all the required information. So we will have two, three minutes more before the validatory of this international conference. So over to Madam. Thank you, sir. Now I would like to request the program chair, Dr. Shomo Paul, to give art as a token of appreciation to Dr. P.K. Paul. Yeah, I have uh, a request of organizing committee members uh, to share a token of appreciation. Dr. T.K. Paul, Executive Director, PG Department, and Information Scientist, Saigon University. Sir, please accept a uh, yes, small token of appreciation as director of Icon in 2021. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, organizing, organizing member, please, uh, please. Uh, uh, share the uh, token of appreciation. Hello. Organizing, please share the token of appreciation to Dr. P.K. Paul. Just a minute, sir. Please. Dr. T.K. Paul, sir, please accept it. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for giving the opportunity to and also thanks to Edwin Intelligence for giving the opportunity. Thank you, Professor Shomopal, sir, all the organizing team members, conveners, co-conveners, organizing team, executive members, Mem uh, members, international advisors, and TPC members, and session chairs for doing uh, uh, doing this wonderful job. I am thankful and grateful to everyone. Uh, now over to Madam. Thank you. Thank you. Now I would like to request Dr. P. K. Paul, sir, CEO of this conference, to give a token of appreciation to the chair of this conference, Dr. Shomo. Sir, kindly 
Kindly okay. uh, accept this token of appreciation as a general chair, and also you have done a lot of work in front of your busy schedule as, as a principal of Saint Louis State University. On behalf of organizing, on behalf of AP Intelligence, offering this token of appreciation for your hard work and making successful international conference. Even still, we have pending paper presentation in different slots. Please accept this token of appreciation. Please accept this token of appreciation. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. And uh, I'm really grateful to Dr. P.K. Paul. I'm really grateful to the Honorable Vice President, sir, Honorable Chairman, sir, all the Honorable President, Madam, without this inspiration, it could not be so to conduct. And all international advice for the body of the esteemed keynote speaker, invited speaker, esteemed technical program committee members, and all the faculty and my fellow staff members. And all the members, all the family members of our college, and thanks to all, without all of your support, all of your inspiration, all of your blessings, it could not be possible for us to conduct such an event. Thanks to all. Thanks to Dr. Peter Thanks to all. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Now I would like to call the convener of this conference uh, and the head of the department of ECE, Mr. Shubrojit De, for the for this token of appreciation. For Shomo Palsa, please give him this token of appreciation. Uh, okay. Mr. Shubrojit De, sir, the convener of the conference. Iconius 2021. Sir, please accept it. Thank you, sir. Thank you, my pleasure, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Sir, sir. sir please accept this token of appreciation. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Thank Pekhi. you. Pal, sir. Thank you, Dr. Shomu Pal, sir. Thank you so much. Now I would like to request Dr. Shomo Pal, sir, for giving this token of appreciation to our co-convener, Dr. Kapu and Sarkar, sir. Dr. Kapu and Sarkar, co-convener, Iconius 2021. Dr. Kapu and Sarkar, sir, please accept a small token of Appreciation on behalf of Iconia 2021. Sir, please accept it. Okay, I think there is a bit of issues. So, uh, thanks to Dr. Tapun Sharkar. Next, please. Next, sir, what are you talking uh, now, uh, on behalf of uh, Iconia 2021, may I now uh, uh, just humbly I want to offer a small token of appreciation to our organizing secretary and the moderator of the entire inaugural session and the technical session, Mr. Suchita Mukherjee, ma'am. And uh, for uh, hard working and the coordination of the entire inaugural session as well as the technical session. Thank you, sir. Thank we you. A small token of appreciation from the on behalf of Iconia 2021. Please accept it, madam. Thank you, Thank you sir. Thank you, Pick Thank you, thank you, madam. Participant kindly mute yourself. Participant kindly mute yourself. Kindly mute yourself. I would like 
I would like to call Executive Committee Member, the Vice Principal of St. Mary's Technical Campus, Kolkata, Ms. Madhuri Bhattacharya. I would like to request Dr. Shomu Pal, sir, for this token of appreciation. Honorable Vice Principal, Madhuri Bhattacharya, Madam, uh, for our constant inspiration of the conference and the support without which it was not possible to conduct such an event. On behalf of Iconia 2021, I, I only want to offer a small token of appreciation to our Vice Principal Madam. Madam, please accept. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. And it's my honor to be a part of such a wonderful international conference. My big thanks once again goes to our principal, sir, Dr. Shomopal and Dr. P.K. Pal. It's a very nice experience for such kind of international conference once again. And a big thanks to Suchita, ma'am, for conducting, organizing such a wonderful welcome session. Thank you, ma'am. Thank, Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, really, it's my lifetime experience also be with all of you. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, okay. Thank Thank you. Thank you. I, I have to, I, I am interested to add one more word yes. because we have to run from 2 p.m. to more than 6 or 7 p.m. parallel yes. sessions. So yes, still, yes. we will be in conference. It is just ending of the keynote lectures. Yes. So yes. Still, we have to learn, we have to go up to evening, I think, because there are 35 paper presentations. So we could move to next uh, honor, to next yes, uh, certificate of appreciation. Yes, sir. Yes. I'd like to request also, sir, Dr. Shomo Pal, sir, to, uh, for this token of honor or appreciation to Ms. Manteshwari Chakrabarti. Manteshwari, ma'am. Uh, on behalf of ITONIAS 2021, uh, I have need to offer a small token of appreciation to our executive committee member, Anteshwari Chakram, Madam. Madam, please accept it. Is she here? Uh, might be some network issues, which Madam is not there. We'll Thanks, Madam, for your presentation. Please go to the next one, ma'am. <laughs> Now, I would also like to request Dr. Shomo Pal, sir, to give this token of honor to Executive Committee member, Mr. Orijit Saha. On behalf of ITONIAS 2021, uh, I humbly offer a small token of appreciation to Mr. Orijit Shah, he is our executive committee member of this international conference, as well as he will be acting as a session coordinator in the upcoming next paper presentation session, track one. So, uh, a small token of appreciation to Mr. Orijit Shah. Please, uh, Mr. Orijit Shah, sir, please accept it. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. It's my honor, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Now, I would like to request Tomo Pal, sir, for giving the token of appreciation to Ms. Pail Gangu. Uh, on behalf of ITONIAS 2021, uh, I want to offer a small token of appreciation to our executive committee member, Pail Gangu, madam and also for a wonderful inaugural song. So, a small token of appreciation to Pail Ganguly, Madam. Madam, please accept it. Pail, ma'am. Pail, ma'am. I think some network issues are issues. Uh, okay. So uh, thanks please give the token members. of appreciation to Ms. Executive Committee Member Shuman Odhikari. Yes. On behalf of ICANIAS 2021, uh, I want to offer a small Adhikari. token of appreciation. Yeah, I want to offer a small token of appreciation to Mr. Shuman Odhikari, Executive Committee Member, and also Head of the Department of Electrical Engineering. Also, he will be acting as a session coordinator for our next upcoming 
paper presentation session track 2 okay suman odhikari sir please accept it yes sir thank you sir thank you sir it's, it's an honor for me thank you thank, thank you so suman odhikari sir yes sir i would like to request somo pal sir to give this token of appreciation to the executive committee member the hod of civil engineering ramesh raja on behalf of iconias 2021 i to offer a small token of appreciation to our executive committee member sir ramesh raja and he is also the head of the department of electrical engineering and he will be also in the back to session of the paper presentation so ramesh raja sir please accept a small uh, token of appreciation ramesh raja sir okay my issues are not there okay. so yes sir uh, uh, we have uh, come almost to the end of the session so i would like to request the session general chair dr somo pal sir for this vote of thanks thank you sir yeah. thank you madam uh, actually uh, now we are ending on a platform uh, the end session of the uh, inaugural session as well as the technical session and the our technical session the technical session was enlightened by eminent education professor sushi sharma professor damodar gurupa professor vinay kumar and eminent industrialist professor uh, nagavin kumar and i strongly feel all of you those who are present over here are highly benefited the all the lectures all the technical sessions in smartness in artificial intelligence age emerging trends in artificial intelligence opportunities in data science as well as you know digital education so i strongly feel all this information the researchers the educators students sir keep in mind and they can apply in their own research area and after that uh, actually this is the end of our keynote section invited lecture session and paper presentation in different tracks and online hall using google meet and it will be uh, it will be started soon and feedback is already provided already our some chair dr pickable sir sent in the uh, zoom chat box so please do fill up that and for the paper presenters and the co-authors we will be meeting with you again in the paper presentation schedule in different tracks and in the online hall uh, already mentioned the track wise in google meet thank you thanks for kind thanks to all thank you everyone thank you sir and special thanks to the technical team member also those who are doing the technical tasks as well as various administrative tasks i special thanks to the technical team members also so sir we will move to the paper presentation so we are here with concluding i think feedback link all of them have filled so now we are moving to uh, paper presentation or after 20 minutes shall we shall we take any break or after uh, right now we will move what is your opinion sir Uh, I think that after 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 yeah, I don't know now it's already wait to six, so we can start from uh, we can start from twenty. Okay. So we so we we'll, so we we'll start now or after twenty or two twenty. Uh, or actually, sir, but if we after that don't have any problem, I think that our patient chat sir already join okay, okay. the session. So we'll join. So we'll start. So we'll start. We'll start now. We may continue. We may continue. We may continue. Okay. Yeah. So, okay, thank you, everyone. Paper presenter, kindly join in the Google Meet. As Professor Shomopal sir said, General Chair, thank you once again, Govind Kumar sir, Vijay Kumar sir, uh, uh, for giving the opportunity and conducting this session. Thank you once again for your technical support also. Technical team members also, Shaila Kamath and Deep Devnath and others 
who also done a lot of work i also thank full to them so thank you sir then we are moving okay thank you everyone in the zoom platform